Uh-huh. What's cracking? It's your homie, Lil Mystery. You are now listening to the Emo Brown Podcast, the downest fool in Chula Vista since AC Slater, homie. You're listening to Magrito Podcast Network, celebrating the culture of Chicanos and Latinos one story and voice at a time. Connect on social, on Instagram and Facebook at Magrito. Find all the Magrito Podcast Network shows over at Magrito.net. Ladies and gentlemen, and all lives, thank you for checking into another gobble gobble episode of Emo Brown Podcast, Metiche Monday, brought to you by the wonderful people at Grasshopper. At Grasshopper, Perro, for all your medicinal red. Oh, I brought chapstick. For all your medicinal recreational <laughs> cannabis needs, make sure you go to Grasshopper. Pick up your pre rolls, your Emo Brown pre roll. Thank everybody in your family with a pre roll. Your Emo Brown pre roll. That's the one. <laughs> Three of them, $12. Take your card, make it clack at 15% back on Tuesdays. 30% off. Poker Tuesdays. Tuesdays. Head, bro. I'm or, ready for or a, Thursday. I'm or ready Thursday. for an episode today. I'm Hell ready yeah. for an episode. I'm, re- <laughs> you know, I'm ready for an episode because we're going to be playing nothing but BJ just Barra jams in the background. Hey. Ladies and gentlemen, the musical stylings of Boy Just Barra. Barry Just Barra. Look at that. That sounds good, bro. It sounds like a knockoff Blink 182 song. Same strong so pattern. <laughs> Oh, and then you lose me there. Yeah, there it goes. There it goes. <laughs> no cierto, brother. If you get an opportunity, make sure you guys subscribe, review, and rate us on Spotify and on Apple. We're on everywhere now, right, Casas? Or not yet? We are everywhere. This podcast is available. Everywhere. Go to Spotify. I like Spotify. But wait, there's visuals. more. But go wait, there's Monday. more. If you go right now, well, metichemonday.com. That's where you're going to have the links, all the housing of all the sites of where every show is going to be streamed moving forward. There's a little cl- a little counter, a little timer. I think there's a mu- there's some music in the background. There might even be photos of Casas discovering bands, <laughs> doing crazy shit. Oh, snap. You know? But make sure, metichemonday.com, metichemonday.com, metichemonday.com for all of your Metiche Monday shit. Episodes, archives, todo el pelo. Awesome. All of the things. What else do we got? We uh, got a lot of cool shit. This is a holiday week. Mm. We wanted to make sure we get in an episode before it gets a little too tardy. Um, we have CC, the world famous bartender, my partner in crime out at the Elwood, the best bar in Chula Vista. Not said by me, said by her. But of course, we are all on board with that. She'll be making us her famous white Russians, bro. I'm going to cheers you to that. Look at this thing. Maybe oh. we should. she should tell us what we're drinking. Because oh. What are we mm. drinking, Ceci? It's mm. not a white Russian. That, I love that name, though. Not a white it's Russian. It's not a white Russian. I'm with I that. love that. That's what the Times. I love that yeah. drink. <laughs> <laughs> it might be a brown Ukrainian. I'd rather have a brown Ukrainian than a white Russian. Yahweh! Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, let's digest. What mm. have you guys been up to? Chingandole, bro. Chingandole. I'm just trying to love you. You know what I've been up to. <laughs> A lot of fucking work. Five That's days right. this week, right? Oh, man. You're a showman, bro. All you do is do shows. Grasshopper, make sure you come in. The beer is coming. We'll be brewing it next week. That's going to be called Grasshopper. Uh, Grasshopped. The Elwood. All your late night happy hours. $5 old fashioned. $5 laser. What is it? Laser Latinos. What do we have over there? Oh, $5 Latinos. That's Lat- what this is called. <laughs> That's, <laughs> yes. The <laughs> imposter. <laughs> oh, the imposter. Oh, shit. Ooh, the imposter. I'm the with imposter. that. Ooh, yeah. Cheers to the imposters. Ooh. Cheers. Mira. Pinchy hexes. Bronk. Mm, mm. Wrong. Three Punk Ales. <laughs> World Cup is upon us. If somebody wants to watch the match right now, put it on. I want to know all about the USA. Yes. Me personally, I'm rocking my USA shirt. Don't get it twisted. Oh, oh no, he's taking off you. clothes. Hi, the Punchies, children. Punchies, Punchies. A, A, Tu, okay, Tu, A. Ah. 3PA, Three Punk Ales merch for the World Cup available now. You like hats? Yo, check out this fucking hat, perro. Oh, Three that's, punk that's ales. Nice. Look at that. Woo, woo. Oh, look at his team. Don't worry. It's, um, it's just These for today. Are slick as fuck. Today, <laughs> today, 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 today is just USA. Because on Tuesday, you don't like Mexico, we no wow, mames. Man, you know what? I'm going to give a couple of these away. Uh, chef, you do, you're good at doing giveaways. I'm yeah. sure you'll figure something out. I'll, I'll figure it out. You like sure. the shirt? <laughs> <laughs> you like the shirts too? Look at that thing. Damn. You like all shirts? The we got shirts. All of the things, man. Today we're going all in on USA. Wow. Daddy's gambling again. Daddy's That's gambling nice. again. Oh, yeah? I woke up at 2 in the morning to drop some bets, made some calls, and uh, my, my parlay hit. 
Oh. I, Netherlands and England, you I'm win? telling you. Yeah, I, I like the way I you win. gamble, though. I think that's the wise way to do it. What's the way to do You're it? You're not fucking like remortgaging the house and shit. Oh, no, no, you no. You started bro. with like a no, little lump no, and you just no. kept growing. We just grow it, bro. We just grow it. Make sure you get there early to 3Punk for all the events. We have games today. We have games tomorrow. We have games every day. It's on. It's popping. Somebody calling me on my phone? What happened to your music, bro? Live on the email. Jesus room. Christ, you no, need better bro. production. Uh, we have glassware. What kind of glassware, you ask? I'm telling you, it's like fucking QVC today, bro. <laughs> We've got glassware. What kind of glassware? We're selling this glassware. You're going to get $5 pints all World Cup long if you buy this little cup. For $19.95. This this cup, cup. Look at this cup comes for $15, and it includes your first pour. So if you come to the brewery, we have very limited. I think we only made like 200 or 250 of these. Wow. And they started selling out yesterday. So get here early. It's not glass for all you drunkards. So make sure you do the so right thing. What happens after you buy it? I mean, you can just. $5 refills you bring it all you. month long. We're all that. World Cup long. I like it. You know, there's and only. it doesn't matter what you refill it with? No, no, my lepito. Lo wow. que ustedes quieran. You know, lo que ustedes quieran. You okay. know that? The that's Emo a, Brown. Deal. The Emo Brown 8.1 coffee barrel aged beer. Fuck it. $5 if you buy this cup. Wow. Take it to the wood fill with an that's imposter. Yeah, bro. You want a cuvee? <laughs> oh, make me an imposter and dig. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Yeah, we're gonna need a refill on that. Here, you want that? Me lo There's only only two <laughs> people. <laughs> only two kind of people are gonna get five dollar pints Think throughout the some. World Cup. If you have this glassware, or if you have your uh, your emo brown social club card, which by the way we have re-upped on. We have yeah. those. They are now in stock here at the warehouse at HQ, with, along with shirts. Along the way, you'll also be getting your new sweater and new hoodie. I don't know where where, where uh, Patreon is with that, but it's coming. Good things are coming. What do you got, Sheffy? Sheffy Dahmer? What are, wait, 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 wait. So, well, the link for the um, holiday party is out, so you should have received that via your Patreon. Uh, if you haven't yet, you should definitely look for it because you have until November 28th. <laughs> <laughs> Watching the Watching struggle go The struggle over here is hilarious, but... If you, uh, you have until November 28th to RSCP, if you are a Patreon member or you listen to this podcast and want to become a Patreon member for $25, uh, you get to come to this event. It's mm. going to be amazing. I'm going to be cooking. I have a DJ for us. We, oh, we yes, have a DJ. We have a DJ. We have BJ. Got a DJ and a BJ. We have All right. uh, the Elwood <laughs> doing <laughs> drinks. We have three punk ales, beer being served. Yes, indeed. Uh, it is all inclusive. You yes. get all of that for free if you are a mm. Patreon member. So become a Patreon member. Get uh, RSVP by November 28th because after that, doesn't matter who you are. It's $100 a ticket mm. because it's worth $100. I would Come on, say just, so. just alone on alcohol and food? Just on chef's so food. So worth it. <laughs> yeah, we got to talk, about, we we, heard the we gotta talk about that budget. What? Yeah, before y'all motherfuckers get too crazy, we got we might end up just eating McNuggets and, and fucking 39 cent Weenies? cheeseburgers, bro. Hey, weenies are on sale at Food Weenies. You, you can't afford <laughs> Chef Claudia? <Those> <laughs> <laughs> I know I can't afford Chef Claudia. I see your pictures. Shit. I'll get to the appetizer, maybe half the main course, and be like, all right, you guys. Are. <laughs> I tap. That's cool. I tap. No, I got us. I don't even I qualify us. with my quality of kitchen. I got us a really great sponsor for the shrimp ceviche, El Faro Get Seafood. It. Thank you guys so much for sponsoring oh, the, the shrimp. Hey, we fuck. That's how we fuck? Yeah. We get sponsors for food? <laughs> for food, yeah. All so right. I got I got a sponsor. Thank you so much to El Faro Seafood. I'm reaching out to a couple of other purveyors to see if I can get some more donations. Um, or if you want to donate, um, definitely reach out to me. Let me know. Chef Claudia Sandoval on Instagram and uh, let's make some stuff happen. Oh yeah, what else you got going on? That's a lot on your plate though. There's so much. There's so much. Get it, girl. There's so much. Um, uh, no, how about you guys go? Damn, she said enough of my like, shadow. Yeah, being I was cast. like, no, no, no. I, I feel I'll bad. Let the little guys do something. <laughs> <over here. laughs> I got gigs. Always gigs. Tell Fucking me, tell me, tell Tuesday me. tomorrow, I'll be back at the hills, returning triumphantly. Eight to eleven. Gavin says he'll be there, so you can meet Gavin in the in the flesh if you want to come out and meet Gavin. Uh, Wednesday, I'm at Sandbox, 6 to 9. little pre-Turkey Day uh, feast of pizza. Nice. And then I'll be doing the Mannequin Vanity Records, which is my record label. Uh, oh. Holiday live stream hey, you're on, on a Saturday. record label for? I didn't even That's know that. Correct. Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. So we Is this uh, a record label you created for yourself? This is not. No. Right, cool. No, this is a real record. Though. Where are they from? From San Diego. Okay, who else do they have on there? So we got a lot of folk and indie punk bands. So we got Kelly Dell, we got Mojave Fuck Soul, we got BJ Disparo, we got Clint Westwood. Do you like Clint Westwood? Blink, Blink 180 Foo? Clint Westwood. We could put, uh, Blink 180 Foo's going to be under the emo brown umbrella, <laughs> I thought. But uh, yeah, so Saturday we'll be doing that live stream and every artist submits like a little segment and then we do it kind of like a clip show where we play that and then myself and the guy who runs the label, Jake, we just get sloshy and uh, talk holiday cheer. 
Nice. Nice, nice, nice. nice. This Friday, yeah. this Friday, Black Friday, we're going to have a social, uh, a San Diego local, rather, Black Friday being put on by the big bosses themselves. El Compa Pinchi, Bobby Tribal's going to be setting one off at the lower left. We were invited, so the homie Chicle is going to be setting up his booth, and we at Emo Brown will be setting up our booth. So we're going to have some merch heading out there. So this Friday, it's going to start at Lower Left out at Tribal Headquarters. Thank you, Bobby Tribal, for the invite. It's from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Then we're all going to head on down to National City to nice. the Vision Culture spot. We're going to go on to Highland, and we're going to keep the party going there with a, uh, another pop-up that day. So this Friday, make sure you all get there. It's all ages welcome. Support locals. Support your community. Let's go. Who's going to be there, you ask? Uh, Chicle. Hello, Bunny Kitty. <laughs> uh, who's this? Destino, Emo Brown, Mike Giant, Teen Angel. Take, take a time out. Casas, you know those names. Teen Angel, no mames. Legendary. Mike Giant, no mames.com. <laughs> Squared. Squared. <laughs> <laughs> Even more of a, They're all legends, bro. Tribal gear. Servants. Silk Cloud. That's little homie. SDA equipment. West Side Love. We're going to have DJs. It's a party. It's nice. a party on Friday. It's, you know, it's a small business weekend. So we're going to start a little with that uh, little support local, support local community businesses. Friday, 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 10 a.m., 5 p.m., then 5 p.m. to 10 p.m. All nice. fucking day, bro. Let's All fucking it. day. Nice. Not about that life. Me, personally, since you ask, what am I doing? <laughs> How's Waldo? Uh, You're coming you. back to work. <laughs> no. Oh, man. yeah. Fuck. I'm back to work on Monday <laughs> starting next week. Like hard. Because right now we're it's officially the peak season at UPS. So, yeah, I'll be going in super early and coming down around 10. How'd they rope you in? They're like, we're going to have a film crew here every Monday, and well, we need you. I'll tell you that. They sent me a chilling text this morning. <laughs> no! Yeah. Ooh, spooky's like, where you at? Peak is here. We need you, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> it just starts up. Yeah. you up. <laughs> and I, I responded. was like, you got it. I'll see you next week. <laughs> so, yeah, it's over. My Monday's off are done. It's okay. They'll no problem. They'll, They'll be back. back. It's just They'll for peak. It's just for a couple no months. Nada. No pasa nada. In addition to that. Voice of San Diego, uh, they record on Tuesday, so they reach out to me, and I guess I'm going to be on their show this week. All right. Yeah, so I'll make sure not to embarrass us. Thank you. Too much. Good just ideas. enough. Do you just want me to come embarrass us? Huh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to embarrass us a little bit. I'm going to embarrass you. <laughs> so yeah, Voice of San hard. Diego tomorrow. Their episodes come out every Friday. Check them out wherever you check out uh, any podcast. It'll be available there. BOSD. Uh, you know what? Should we get into our, let's get Wait, into I our have people. one more. Get it, girl. I do get have it, one more. Get it, get it. Uh, I'm going to be on the Month of a Million Meals Telethon on ABC Channel 10, November 29th. Uh, me and Munchkin are going to be taking phone calls. Uh, she, she didn't know I just suffered her up. She just popped her head up like, wait, what? Uh, so yeah, we're going to be doing the telethon. It's something that I do every year. I've been, this is probably my sixth, seventh year doing it. What is uh, that, how does a telethon work? You literally just answer phone calls uh -huh. uh, while the television is going and the, the ABC is like doing interviews of like local celebrities like my uh, one of my favorite people to sit next to is Tommy Gomes, who you know, mm -mm, the uh, fishmonger. Sam, Sam the cooking guy is always there with us. Uh, Troy Johnson is always there with us. El Champs Demo Brown. El no. Cham <laughs> yeah, I mean, come I on. I thought you were like down. sitting next to me. You know, I thought, I, yeah, thought they, I, I thought we had something here. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Adjacent um, to. Yeah. So yeah, we we take phone calls and you guys call in and uh, the goal is to raise a million meals and usually we'll is, get that sounds difficult. I know it does sound difficult, but it's a month um, and it's actually really not that difficult. If you didn't know, donating during the month of a million meals, because usually there's a, a sponsor that doubles your donation. OK, so usually your your one dollar would give you two meals. Uh, so during the month of a million meals, one dollar equals four meals. So think about it. If you donate five dollars. How much is that? Um, carry 20, the meals. 20 meals. Uh, 20 meals. $250,000. So you can see how that can grow exponentially. exponentially. Uh, <laughs> I'm with it. I'm with uh, it. So I definitely encourage you guys to set your reminders now. I'll definitely remind you next Monday if I'm on. Um, whoa, whoa, whoa. If you're on, what happened? No, no. Canceled? <gasps> no, no. I mean here. Like uh, if I'm here. All right. Where are you going to be? <gasps> hey, I'm so offended. What the fuck is going on? <laughs> I mean, this is. I don't know what if my laryngitis. This gets is worse. the number one rated podcast in the land, hey. and you're gonna That's leave like us. when someone leaves and goes, "See you." Yeah, yeah right. Maybe, maybe. Um, but for those of you that um, want to do something good during Thanksgiving week, uh, Feeding San Diego still has slots available where you can sign up to volunteer. So if slots that's something. Yeah, and they have slots all day, I during the slots. morning, during the afternoons, whenever you're off work. Um, if it's something that you and your family would love to do, there's always people. Not my only family loves slots. <laughs> So go to feedingsandiego.org to sign up to volunteer. Um, and not just for this week, obviously, if you want to give back and give thanks, um, but obviously through the whole month of December, um, there's always a ton of help that needs to happen. And just so you guys know, 
Feeding San Diego does a lot of food rescue. So all of the produce that would normally go to waste at like Avon's and Ralph's and all of those places, they rescue that food. And then that food gets has to get sorted. So me and my daughter go, we sort, we bag, we do all of that. And then all we do is, is put it right back. And then they distribute that to families. So it's a really great way to not only help with sustainability in your community, but also to help people eat in this community. You are a pillar of the community. Oh, thank you. Well done. Thank you. This Teldathon, is it exclusive strictly to San Diego? Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This Very is nice. Feeding San Diego. So Very it's, nice. It's the Feeding America branch that only helps San Diego. So mm. you are helping people right in your community. Um, there, you know, you are literally feeding people that, that are, are hurting, you know, and let's face it, usually during the holidays, a lot of people get vacation and some of those kids that usually would depend on having those two meals at school now don't have them. That's so crazy. it really helps. That's crazy. Yeah. It really helps a lot of those families. So definitely consider, um, helping out. And by the way, feeding San Diego, if you are in need, it, I don't care who you are at any point. You, you know, you have a job, you don't have a job. You, if you need food, guys, go to feedingsandiego.org. There's multiple distributions. They work with a bunch of nonprofits, a bunch of community-based organizations, a bunch of faith-based organizations, which means your churches. Um, so you can find a distribution center, uh, whether it's large scale, and you never have to provide any information. You don't have to provide any documentation. You don't have to provide an ID, nothing. So you just go, you pick it up, and that's it. There's no questions asked. They don't want to know who you are, nothing. I feel like you did a lot of uh, good, feel good story right there. That was a, a lot of good. We were ready to talk some shit. <laughs> I feel we're ready to just kind of, you know. Let's go. Let's yeah. get into the names of the people who make this shit happen. Dude, it's Thanksgiving, yes. so we're going to give a little back. I think I'll, I'll read to that. all of the fucking names, <laughs> chef. I can help you. Yeah. You want, oh man, I'm not going to move this computer. <laughs> no, how, it's fine. How good is your eyesight? <laughs> all right. From the top, from, <laughs> just, newest to oldest. Newest to oldest. Let's go. Ramon Nunez, bienvenido. Eric Casas, you nasty fucking guy. guy. Look at you. Hortensia Yescas, Serge One, Andre Mejia, Chris M, Mike, Ramon Saldivar. What's up, bro? Ruben Quinones, Matt Diesel, Eddie Zuko. Eddie Zuko. Brenda Aguirre, Erlin Holland, Carlos Jimenez, De Lara, Greg, Paulina for the people, Kenya Nieves, Antonio Sanchez, Jess, Carlos Solorio, breathe. se puede. Jared Goldman, Gabriela Ledesma, Rodrigo Arancibia, Mary Ice, Javi Brito, a.k.a. El, El Flaco, Carly, Claudia Wucher, West Said, he was on the bike ride yesterday, got mm -hmm. to hang out with him, Victor Almazan, David Shapiro, Tanya Torres, Jorge Gonzalez, Edna Alvarez, Reggie Garcia, he will be spinning December 10th here, oh, a.k.a. Reg 1, what's well, good? A, El Ivan Espinoza, our very own squeegee print representative, Mr. Jorge, Mr. Jorge, Mr. Jaime Jorge Cepeda, bienvenido, James Clerk, Jason Clerk, Camille, Robert Jimenez, Alexandra Camacho, David D.B. Styles. We saw him on the, not the gratitude ride, uh, the walk. The Justin walk. The Justin walk to yeah. raise awareness for homelessness, teenage homelessness here in San Diego. He was the, uh, rocked out in his Aztec tribe gear and they were marching in that in his little family it, it was awesome man we'll talk Aww. about a little bit more of that later clint jones that's the local man who uh made this turkey day possible for 50 families he was able to sell us 50 turkeys that we were able to get signatures to give away so that's happening today nice. here at the warehouse 2 p.m if you're on that list you already know you're coming in if you're not on the list and you still want some help reach out to us we do have uh we do have some resources that we uh, had in surplus that we're able to give back so reach out to us. Come on by. We'll make sure you take care of it. The Star Wars Brothers. Star Wars! Brian Casey, Marisol Yescas. I don't know Ortega, that so much. Thomas, I love it. Page two, man. All right. This is usually where I get lost. Yeah. This is usually where I don't want to read it anymore. I've had a couple Pasa of imposters. So, uh, Vernie, Pasa unknown soldier. Way. Ramiro El Misfit. Sara Chula Mais. Got to meet you again officially for the first time yesterday. Will Holder. Baboso. Mark Sanchez. Tim Gomez. Cisco Hernandez. El Compa George. SDCA Equipment. Kula Yoga. Get your stretch on. Fuck you, Matt Ferris. Fuck you, Matt. Fuck you, Matt Ferris. <laughs> yeah. Andrew Maison. Mi mamá. He said it before me, so that Griselda, means something happened. I don't like him. Griselda Ooh. Garcia. Amar Campanajar. Hey, sometimes when you lose, you actually win. I don't know if that's the case here, Amar, but we'll see what happens. Darren behind the bar, Pierre Dows, <laughs> Rarity Powell, Stephanie Perez, Mr. Stoll, Sansom Sinsoms, Jose Torres. <laughs> <laughs> El Guero Flores, Fonzie, Shannon, Lynette, Renette Pulido. Her true crime uh, podcast trivia is coming again to the brewery. Hernan Hernandez, Jay Ford. Where is Jay Ford? He's probably doing something illicit. David Martinez, Sweet Aria, Chef Josh K. Oh, I'm going to do a song with him. You're going to write it in Sharpie? Yeah, he, he, I'm going to write it in Sharpie. <laughs> he sent me a link to a song that they want to redo. Or, or do rather, and, and I don't know if it's a Dogwood thing or his personal St. Didicus thing, but he's like, hey man, I need you to join me on this. I said, I'm in. David Baker, it was nice to see you on your walk as well. Danny O, El Pinguino, 
that motherfucker gets drunk and starts hugging me and telling me how much he loves me. And then he starts pushing me away and saying, I fucking hate you. I'm like, all right, dog. <laughs> Apparently he drinks bipolar shit comes out of him. Willie Ruiz, Tony Marroquin, el compa David, Jose Oribe, el resto, Quintero, the nurse Navarro. Nice seeing you after a three-month hiatus. What did you do? Tony Yu, Sonia, Sarah Stoll, Took Cesar Fernandez, lessons. Jose Fernandez, Martin Casas. Damn, that's page two. Go. <sighs> you got this. You got this. Uh, you page. can do it. Mason and Isante, so Alex Rivera, for all your plumbing needs, North County, that's your guy. Matthew Chavarria, Roxana, Theo Collins, Omar Sanchez. I'm not reading your name, Professor. What the fuck is going on? Yeah. Elias Gallegos, oh, what is going on? pages? Fuck, I'm Michael Brown. Brian Vong, Elias Delgado. Oh, oh, it wasn't Elias. Uh, it was close, but it was a little guy. Hello, Eric that was Ruiz, Maddie, any, <laughs> any Wilkes. All right. That's what I wanted to see. I wanted to see if, how far we could get with. Uh, well, Trippy was Annie Wilkes last week. Yeah, what is Annie Wilkes again? I don't think we ever figured it out. No? You have a producer. That. Producer? Yeah, one of you guys figured that out. Who is Annie Wilkes? He's Maddie Annie Wilkes, He's Bill Luki, Arcadio Mora, Pablo Cacahuatz, BJ Jasbera, Evelyn Bernardi, El Compa JP from Phoenix, Arizona, Giovanni Correa. That's our lawyer. He, <laughs> Annie Wilkes. Who is that? <laughs> Annie look. Wilkes is the main antagonist in the 1987 novel Misery by Stephen King. <laughs> in oh, the Kathy Bates. Yes, Kathy Bates. Bates. All right. Yeah. All right. <gasps> I don't see the connection there. Let's see. No, maybe it was something from a while ago. Something about a crazy That's lady a with a knife. That's a creepy movie. That's a creepy movie. There's movies that don't need like sci-fi shit to be creepy. That is one of them, man. What's that the is... one where that lady like keeps a guy hostage and breaks That's his ankle? That's the one. Is that the one? Yeah, yes, Willy Wonka. Misery. Willy Wonka. That's the fucking Ben movie. Bikes Rebeer, Hexes. Hexes. Wrong. Uh, <laughs> Felipe Moraz, Maggie Brennan, and look at you looking at me holding your breath. Will he say my name? Is he going to say my name? Is I said your name. Beatrice Uribet, Chef Claudia, world renowned chef, verified on all social media. She has a check mark and she didn't pay for it. Elon, <laughs> La Verga, Justin Seleska, Aaron Hill. Happy birthday, Aaron Hill. Now, save that shit, bro. We, we, we sang to her we yesterday. We sang to her yesterday. We do it. We happy sang, birthday no. to you. Oh, happy birthday to you. Matt Lawson. Happy birthday to you. Freshman Mungia. Happy birthday, Aaron Hill. Erica Baker. Happy birthday, Yahweh. Our local real estate agent and sponsor of the show, Alberto Aguirre, the smallest teeth, but the biggest voice in the game. Ozzy <laughs> Perez, Kevin Lewis, Giovanni Sanchez, El Abuelo, Marino Gomez. Blah, 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 until somebody I like. Let's see. Oh, El wow. Compa Muzi, El Compa IZ, uh, Selena Lugo, Brandon, Brandov, Sal Maldonado, alias El Chavitz, Tiki Islands, Aisha Ali. I haven't seen Aisha in a while. TKO Deli, Hector Parra, Carla Caro. Ladies and gentlemen, the last page. We made it. You know, this is awesome. You know, it, it's a long fucking list, but that just tells me how much you guys really, you know, fuck with us. That's a lot of people that we read. Not every Monday, because Chef doesn't allow it. But I said, it's Thanksgiving, chef, and we have to give back to the people That's who support right. us. Ya ves como eres. Liga Store Mike, Sonia Baca, Robert Lara just had a birthday. I, read, I want to sing to Robbie Lara because we didn't Lil sing Rob. to him. Lil Rob. Let's see. Lil well, Rob. Well, well, well. Happy birthday Denise Moreno. to you. Lil Rob. Antonio Brito. Happy birthday to you. Angel Fisher Happy Hernandez. Birthday. Happy birthday, Tony Lil Rob. Juarez. Happy birthday. Well, well, well. Jeff Lozano, Oscar Kimo Cantaran, Fernando Doyer Arce. He just left Society Brewing. Well, Wait, who did? El compa... Fernando Arce. I don't know where he went, but I hope... Oh, I do know where he went. Oh! Athletic Brewing, you got a good dude coming your way. Ranting with Ramos. What'd you What's do, Maggie? Crying? Push him out? Alex, Samantha Reina, kind of. Ooh. From what I hear, that kind of happened. Who scandal? God, Wait, what? Paul what? Costello. You can't just let that happen. No, 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 no. You got to give the cheese, Miss Ilosa. All right. Tan, tan, so it turns tan, tan, out Society <laughs> Brewing opened a new spot in Go Old Town. On. Okay. And in Old Town, uh -huh. well, no, I don't think there's other people that have reached out to me to get a job at, at, a, at a Three Punk Ales because they say, oh, the new spot at a Society Old Town has kind of created uh -huh. a, a vacuum where not enough shifts are made available to us. Me gusta el chisme. <laughs> and um, yeah, so there's, some people have reached out to me and you know, we're here to we're here to help out anybody in the 80 or at three punk ales. Uh, you know, we're a pillar of our community here in Chula Vista. We do what we can. You're saying that way too sarcastically, <laughs> but for a lot of people that's very true. Because Maggie got a job true. at Old Town and somebody lost a job probably. Oh. Is, that how, is that how that works? She appropriated Damn. a job. Damn. Damn. Oh. Colonizer. Right. Colonizer. <laughs> <laughs> no cierto, Maggie. You're awesome in my book. Jay Escobar, Lieutenant David Hoyos, once upon a time, the top ranked Mexican in all of Chulvisa. He'll be there again, I he bet. He is now the third. Gustavo Gonzalez, El BFF, Jason Holleran, D Rod, Daniel Rodriguez, Oliver Whitney, my barber. New spot right here off of Anita Street. Play him a visit. El Profe Moreno, Rodrigo, Fernanda Gisbera. I love you. 
Aime, la más guapa del barrio. Bernesto Moreno, Prius makes me puke. Junior Sierra has a big head. Gavin lost a turtle. Tom Phillips had a ponytail once. Veronica Rocha, John Gennaro is white and lives in North County. Caesar Torres, where the fuck are you? Sounds like a Caesar, children's book. I, Gavin, I, 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 I asked you for one favor, my dude. And you fucked I have it laryngitis. up. Laryngitis. And what do you do? And I was like, I need to what you take do? a day off. And what do you do? He's not fucking mm. here. Ladies and gentlemen, Ruben Lopez, too. All right, that's all of us. Well <laughs> fucking done. Oh, man. We made it. That's a long fucking list, bro. If I lose my You're voice, almost out of BJ's Veras. Oh, my God. <laughs> you know what we're going to do now, though? Tell me everything. Let's, let's, well, I'll just tell you a little bit of something. I'm not going to tell you everything, but I'll tell you a little bit of something. Yo, bien chismosa. Pero dímelo todo. <gasps> My Grito Weekly brought to you by My Grito Label Industries. For all of your My Grito news, tap in every Monday. Check us out. Listen to me spout out everything they write down yeah. for better or for worse. <laughs> Thank you to those of you who've already grabbed tickets to the My Grito Fest happening Saturday, December 3rd. How awesome is that? At Border Eggs Brewing in Bell. Uh, help My Grito celebrate our annual music fest with live music, drinks, food, and good vibes. Performances from the Paranoias, Descarados, the Stadians, Isa. Agents, tickets are available and they're moving fast. Mygrito.net. This shit is loud. They have like a monopoly of Jesus Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, paranoia is blowing my fucking ears up. Oh no, these are the rundown creeps. Perdón. Perdón. You can also grab your merch like my Grito t-shirts. <laughs> Patiently waiting, motherfuckers. I'd love to grab Patiently one. Patiently waiting for my fucking shirt. And pick up your records of the Paranoias, Las Calacas, Adrian Carmine, 3LH, Maria Sanchez, all over mygrito.net. Follow us at mygrito.net, 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 mygrito.net. Meso. Oh, all right, now we can get into it. Let's do it. Now we, now we can get, to into, get into, the, into the meat and the meat and potatoes. The tape. The so meat much. and potatoes, the algo bueno, the ca- the chale, the ya- I, I need to make buttons for all that shit. We're supposed to do that last yeah. week. We're gonna do that today. <laughs> oh, that would After we're fucking today. done, we're gonna do that today. Okay, well, we so, already but, have the Yahweh. We have yes, yes, yeah. We just need the chale. We created a wrong. Oh yeah. my we're, we're kind Because of, we can't get rid of that. <laughs> Why is that we? He's just, just fucking you wanna like give me PTSD forever? Is that what that's gonna do? Yeah. Why? That's that was you got your back. You want me to get? You want to? You, you want me to like back. get over it? Yes. <laughs> That's how you get over it. You're Mexican. <laughs> we deal with it. Don't skirt the issue. Attack it head on. I did. And then what? No, no. Attack it head <laughs> wrong. No. All right. Algo bueno. Let's see. Eeny, meeny, miny, ho. Go ahead. What's going on with your algo bueno this week? I had the best bueno of all the algo bueno, so it's good to start. Aww. Go ahead. We went to Disneyland. The Jesperas. Yes. First we trip to Disneyland. Disneyland as a family, huh? That's right. We Go took ahead. we took baby Pete. Uh, and Fernanda's mom, Linda, who has never been to Disneyland either. Wow. Uh, and, you know, so it was really special because they got to share it together and we got to watch it, you know, through the eyes of an adult who's seeing it for the first time and a kid who's I seeing it for the that. first time. So it was fucking almost too much to take at some points. But uh, it was great. Did you cry? We had a good time. I did a couple of times. Aww. Did you really? Fool? Watching him on his first ride, oh, like, Aww. and not being on it. No. <laughs> Fuck children at Disneyland. Go ahead. Finish your story. Finish finish your little sappy story, dog. The parade is really what got me. Like, I was the one that was like, we need to watch a fucking parade. Let's go ride rides while the parade's going. But like watching her mom just get like, so like just, she loves Christmas. So she was just like filming all the lights and all the stuff. And then looking at Pete saying all the names of the characters wrong. Like he says Pluto. Like, (laughs) (laughs) Oh, I I can listen to that He's ready for a Mexican World Cup game. What does he say? (laughs) (laughs) He'll get banned, but he's in. (laughs) But it was it was just fucking it was amazing, and you know all the Disney things that Disney does, they yes. did they did it well for Aww. their first time. So oh, I'm he got so to meet glad. Pluto and fucking Goofy and that's, Mickey. That's pretty. Awesome, Who's his though. favorite? Uh, he's about he Stewie. he does love Steve actually. Really? <laughs> yeah. But why? I just can't. but I think I think it was kids the Mickey. Like me. Really? Really? Yeah. yeah. It is yeah. The, either kids are really deathly scared of me or like a scared. Me. Hey, bitch, are you a scared or what? <laughs> <laughs> no, like, kids either fucking hate me yeah, yeah. or they love me. That's yeah. so funny. I met a little niece for the first time this week, and she was, or yesterday, she was just, like, gazing into my eyes, like, all right, cool. Aww, if he ever hear Steve's voice, like, coming through the radio or something, he goes, more thief, more thief. Is that Steve? You can't say S's. Is that you or your son? Both of us. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> so you have them on one. So that was a fucking, I, I can't top that bueno. That's, that's going to be a bueno for a long time. Really? Mm-hmm. Disneyland for your kid? I assure you, by the time he's five, he won't remember going at all. Oh, I know. We're going to take him again when he's 10 there so you. he can actually remember it. So I'm not the bad but guy. This was, Go ahead. Oh, yeah, no, like 10, I think he'll be able to appreciate and remember it for a while at yeah. least. You know? But two was awesome because even if he's not going to remember it, like he just got so wrapped up in the magic. And I'm not selling tickets to Disneyland. Fuck you, Disneyland, and all your fucking corporate bullshit. There but you go. There you go. All your, all your uh, uh, what's that, C- capitalist bullshit. But Wait. well. 
They sell thirteen dollar fucking Jesus, Jesus Christ. Are, are you okay? <laughs> but the magic they provide is priceless for a two year old. Like that oh, was man. amazing. I felt alive, and you know that, that takes a lot. <laughs> I thought bueno, boys. Well, I went to Disneyland too. I had a better experience because really? I didn't. I we didn't. Out with yeah. Torres. Uh, when did I go? When did you go? Did you go we last went, week? Yeah. I went Tuesday. You went Wednesday. I went Wednesday. I missed I went you Wednesday. by a day. Oh, no. shit. Yeah, Tuesdays you when experience Disneyland with my kids. No, Tuesdays <laughs> when all the annoying kids go, apparently. So I was like, you know, I'm not going on Tuesday. So we went on Wednesday, and then we ran into other parents that didn't have kids there. We were like, yeah, yeah this fucking Wednesday's a day. So we went. We did the thing. We go to California Adventure. We did the ride. Thor pelo, woo-woo shit. Had some drinks. Met up with Cesar Torres, bro. Cesar oh. Torres and a young lady friend of his were there. Childless, Very nice. everyone having, yeah, extremely nice. We kept looking around and seeing kids crying and fucking tugging at their parents' like shirts, like take me here, take me there. And I was like, fucking idiots. We got to do some childless <laughs> Disney because we took Fernando's mom and Pete back to a hotel uh, once they got sleepy, and then me, Fernando, and Bianca went out. Did your and thing? Did that hood rat shit. We what, went, what's hood rat shit for you at Disney? We went to the Tiki Bar. We Go went ahead. to the Star Wars Go Bar. Ahead. Daddy did some edibles, and we yeah. went fucking nice. We tried to get on as many rides as we could, but it was more just like whatever was between the bars. Sneaking <laughs> in um, paraphernalia to Disneyland is hard. Oh yeah. Yeah. Do they have like dogs waiting in the front? And, and that then, dog tripped me out. Yeah, that <laughs> dogs and that an old man like patting me down, and somehow or another. He even work there, huh? I was like, sir, who are you? I don't even know you, <laughs> I mister. Uh, I got in with my pen. And I, and I was like, oh, shit. I told my wife, he's like, I took everything out of my my pants and everything. I was like, okay, everything's out. And then I got in putting stuff in my wallet back in, and my fucking vape pen was there. So, yeah, so I got in with my vape pen. I got high as fuck. It was an amazing time at Disneyland without any kids, bro. Don't take your kids to it's Disneyland. It's amazing with them. If they're under 10. If they're under 10, they're not going to remember. Take them once. Take them out. Okay, wait. Yeah, 10. I don't, I'm thinking of my eight-year-old. I don't want to take him right now because every three minutes, well, bathroom. That's the window. I want a fucking yeah. pickle. See, Give me a doll whip. Give me a churro. He carries bathroom with him and his demands <laughs> are simple. So that's what I'm saying. Like two-year-old was perfect and then we're not going again until 10. Dude, we pulled it off. So we got home like around 10, 10-ish that day and, and my mom and my dad were at our house hanging out, taking care of the boys. I come in without pants on because we went on Splash Mountain and I was, and I was excited because we were, the fuck? <laughs> that was a perfect. What happened? Is, no pants. Q <laughs> elephant. Q yeah. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of weird stuff on the beach. Just barely. So if you're looking at your Disneyland app and you see on your Disneyland app there is no wait at 6:30 at fucking Splash Mountain, you go. It's for a fucking reason, because it's cold outside. And there's nobody in line who wants to get wet at that time. So here come the dumbasses from San Diego. And we're like, hey, bro, let's get on the ride. I oh, look at the, the, fir the first cabins available. Oh, shit, the first four. So my dumbass gets in the front. Then my wifey gets on there. And then the two other people, because we, we also ran into uh, the Jacobos, the, the Tribal Seeds dude, the homie. He was there, Tony Ray, with his wife, lovely time, drank, did our things. Drank a lot that day. It was a fun time. No kids. So we get onto Splash <laughs> Mountain. No, no mom is bro. It's like I never went to Splash Mountain before. I came out. I was drenched. <laughs> I was dripping the whole way time. That was like our second to last ride. So I get home. I'm still like I take all my clothes off. I'm just like in, uh, in boxers and stuff. And Go I walk on. in. And then I come into my house. <laughs> and then uh, my mom's there. And she answers. Oh, que pasó? Fucking I got wet on Splash Mountain. I look over. My little kid comes out through the hallway. Huh? And I was like, oh. My mom's like, nothing. I was like, all right. I almost sold my shit out. I almost sold my shit what out. These, dude, these kids still don't know. The, the first thing they, they have is, how exists. was your meeting? How was your meeting in Los Angeles? <laughs> <laughs> like, it was amazing. Well, Mickey brought up some good points, but there was this goof that just came Wait, in. No mom is. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get caught with this shit one day, but not today, my friend. Yeah, as That's soon as a, they discover Spotify and Apple I think says he's trying to come for cups. Maybe they're the bad reviews her. we get. Get over here, pretty girl. Wait, can you tell us what you made? Can you tell the, the mic what you hop made? In, hop in, Yeah, just get in here really quick and tell us what you made. It's Tito's vodka. Two parts, one part, no, sorry. Two parts Bailey's, one part Tito's, and then topped with screwball and half and half. Oh. You can literally lie to us and we'd believe what you're saying right now, Cece. <laughs> I made this with it Care Bear juice. Whites. I used an ounce of <laughs> Care Bear juice and two egg yolks. Yeah. <laughs> Only the yolks. <laughs> Put her on camera, fool. Look at her. There she is. There Ladies and gentlemen, the world famous Cece from the Alwood tending bar today, holding it down. Miss, I Can do we fancy. afford a full you should, fucking you bottle? Should, what is wrong with here. us? I do, I do fancy another drink, miss. Another one. Make it another a, one. Another wait, wait, one. Wait, wait, no, make it in that. Make, oh, make it, no, one. make it in the big one. In yeah. the big one. Ooh, make it in this. I want to be on a sick make one. Make him today. a quadruple. <laughs> Yeah. I want to hand out turkeys like a turkey, bro. You're going to be throwing turkeys like Trump did fucking paper towels. It's like, what? So let me tell you about Sonora. Remember I went to Sonora this week, and that's my With algo bueno. 
someone. Well, not this weekend. No. Well, with someone, no, el otro. With someone? You went no, in- I went by myself. Oh, I went. That wasn't the Casa Strip. That was the last one. Yeah, you said, no, no. Hey, bro. You're trying to get it caught up, bro. I What's know. Going I was like, on? Wait, what the? No, 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 <laughs> Tell no. Tell us no. about this special person. No, no I went to the uh, <laughs> Festival del Chef Sonora, and that was like seriously epic. I was blown away by the level of production that they had there. In Sonora? Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I mean, like, and I'm not trying to be like, oh, you know, whatever. But usually whenever I go to a festival in Mexico, like, it's it's pretty, but it's like, you know, it's it's just very like, uh, how could I say it? Like very simple in terms of production level. This was like insane. They had like, like, I guess Lincoln, Mexico was like the sponsor. So they had like Lincoln. The car. Picking a, the car. Lincoln. Well, damn. Wait, Gran Marquis. A huevo. <laughs> Hello. It's all That's in the same family. It was insane, you guys. Like I had like a brand new Lincoln pick me up at the airport. Was like, Matthew McConaughey driving it? <laughs> all right, all right, all right. You know what I like about Sonora. <laughs> <laughs> green all light, right. green light. Uh, <laughs> but it was, but it was like. These cars keep getting older and I say the same. <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right, we're done. <laughs> Y'all fucking done yet? Oh, damn. Um, but yeah, it was it was like a fucking whirlwind though. Like I got off the I got off the plane, got into the car. Fifteen minutes later, I was already at a damn dinner. They flew you to Sonora. Yeah, they flew me to Sonora. Perdón, way. Yeah. <laughs> oh shit! Try to was, get some of that shine. Mm, uh, mm. It was amazing. So and was there for three days. Drank way too much at the festival. Uh, the next morning, what they, were they serving? Uh, Beer or liquor or they, wine? So they or had what? their own. Uh, they they had their own bottled by Kukibichi. Q- Q- Kukibichi. Yeah, yeah. Kukibichi. Um, Kulichi town? Never, never heard of it, never but I got you. Yeah. <laughs> Kukibichi or whatever was their beer. And so they had um, different types. They had like an ultra, of course, like their super light beer. They had an idea. The Narcos beer of choice. Michelob Ultra for all your <laughs> Michelob Ultra. cartel activities Michelob. all under 50 calories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so they had all that. And then, of course, there was entirely way too much uh, mezcal. And then there was Bacanora, which is... The Sonoran, yeah. uh, you know, type of mezcal, which is smoky Oof. and delicious. And then, this CC, looks smoky you might be interested in this. Mm. They had this bacanora that was called bacanora miel, which was like almost like a Bailey's version of bacanora, which was entirely way too delicious to like drink. <laughs> because <laughs> because then the next morning I woke up. How fucked up did you get? Really messed up. No? Like, Thank you, I don't remember getting home. No? No, I don't remember getting back to the hotel. It was pretty That's bad. a long drive. No way, bro. It was pretty bad, you guys. It was pretty bad. Shit, it was pretty bad. Dog. But, and then like, I lost my phone. Okay. Yeah. No, so no evidence. I left it, I left no it evidence. The, that's the good part. Not I left it you. in the car. So I had left it in the in my driver's car. So the next morning he was like, oh, time out. Gosh, time the car. fuck out. Time the fuck out. You don't just drop dick like that and then just kind of, you left, I left it in my, my driver's, driver's car. car. <laughs> Like that, I, I left it in my lift. Fucking Matthew McConaughey I on the other you. line. So not did it right. I got your vote. So not did it right, you guys. All right, all right. And then I went to go pick up on my way back. My mom was like, my mom sent me twenty five dollars to my Venmo and put Coyotas, gracias. I'm for real. <laughs> Damn, taking the orders. Sure, I saw yeah, the picture yeah, yeah. too. You were like, you guys, thinking it over. I. I brought home 10 coyotas for me for me and Yanni. They're gone. Like Go ahead and explain to the Anglo-Saxons what a coyota is. Yeah, a coyota is is, is known for in the <laughs> the in Anglo-Saxons, the, no uh, <laughs> In the north of the republic and it's essentially like a like a almost imagine like a pie crust uh that is sandwiched together and in between they usually put like a Nutella or they'll put like piloncillo or mm. they'll put cajeta mm. and they bake it up. And so the inside is like super thin. The sweetness is super thin, just like super thin, but it's like super yummy. And like, imagine just eating like a really flat pie, but it's like a cookie. You anyway, take the good shit from the so inside weird. and you put it outside. No. You know what that model is? That's Night at the Roxbury model. <laughs> we take the nightclub from the inside and we put it on the outside. Yeah. <laughs> and the escapade continued. I got off the plane that should be our back from account. Sonora, <laughs> drove straight to pick up Munchkin early from school uh, because I surprised her because one of my really good friends, Jeanette King, uh, got us a VIP suite at the Lizzo concert in LA. Stop it, fool. Yes. Oh, God, you're dropping so much. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, girl. Do what you no, think. No, it was like think. insane. I've never, I swear to you, in my life, I've never been at a suite in a concert. And I was like, damn, there's like space. Like, I'm like, you know, I'm five, for a lot of you that don't know, I'm 5'11. So having space in a seat is like 
incredible. So yeah, it was like a suite. It was couches. We had drop like, water. and dick. I'm tall. And then they have like the I'm five eleven. We had a five eleven. <laughs> we had a server. Uh, Cardi B came out. Cardi B was your server? No. <laughs> she came out to their suite. <laughs> Cardi B came out in the Lizzo concert. Um, Missy Elliott came out and did a, like a really quick appearance. And like literally everybody lost their fucking minds. It was one of the best concerts I've been to, hands down. Um, Lizzo, you are amazing. If you what ever listen to this. What does she sing? If I was to, what, what is a Lizzo song? What does that sound um, like? I'm 100% that bitch. Uh, yeah, 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 exactly. It's like, it's it's, it's, it's empowerment music. She is like all about empowerment. So okay. it's a lot of her music is, she, she's an, an incredible <laughs> singer, um, but she talks a lot about being an, an empowered woman. She's a plus size woman um, who I absolutely love. The fact that she's giving, you know, women that are, uh, my size, a little bit of a platform, not a little bit, a huge platform. And so many people shit on her. She plays um, the fucking Why do they shit on her? Because she's fat. <laughs> and, no. and there's fat phobia. The first, the first time I heard somebody shit on her, well, the only time I ever heard, I don't know what song she sings, but I, she, she came out with a flute. That was played yes. by like fucking some dude on Mount Rushmore, prop, apparently uh -huh. like some old flute. white fuck. Yeah. And then he, he he used his fucking flute and everybody threw a shit. That's a big deal. I mean, but she's I mean, how many fucking artists, you know, of that are like out there playing a flute on such a <laughs> BJ? Stadium? I have pictures of him playing a flute on his last show <laughs> on that big of a stadium. guys. <laughs> yeah. like, you know, she had two sold out nights at the forum. So super happy for her. Um, she brought out Sasha the flute, which is her flute. That's like all decked out and blinged so out. So she, She's a flute player. Yeah. Legit, like legit. Oh yeah. Oh, okay, cool. No, like she, she like dances while she flutes. Oh my God. It's, she's fucking incredible. If you've never heard of Lizzo, never. she's amazing. No, yeah. I've heard the name. I'm sure you've heard the music. Like the music, no, tal vez. Yeah, maybe. I mean, really? I, I don't know. Even well, if you don't like the music, you got to respect someone who's like that in the public eye and still maintains who they fucking are. Like, yeah. I feel like that'd be the same person her you meet show like at just, a Starbucks or just something. just won a bunch of Emmys as well. Um, she had a show come out on uh, Amazon which she's is an also an actress by my, too. Uh, well, Get she's it, girl. Uh, it's it's uh, what's it called? It's a uh, reality. So if you want to call, it I need to reality. step out of my ignorant bubble. I don't watch a lot of TV. Like I don't listen to my fucking and all the music I listen to is like 1992 corridos and punk rock music, and it ends like at 2005. That shit's weird. I know. Pocket, though. She's great. I mean, maybe if you had like daughters, you might mm -hmm. listen to a little bit of Lizzo. But yeah, she's she's honestly really awesome. I'd be I'd be a little weirded out if my eight year old came up to me and said, I'm 100 percent that bitch. <laughs> so, yeah, you're probably right as more. <laughs> I'm 100 percent that bitch, even when I'm crying. Yeah, yeah. it's that, crazy. You guys had a blast. Oh, my God. We Fuck had such a yeah. fucking blast. Like uh, part yeah. of the reason why I still have very voice limited from all voice the screaming. from all the screaming. Yeah. Like on Saturday, it was in, it was it was so insane. What's your uh, Charlie moment? No, 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 no. No? What's what happened? What's your bueno? I got a lot of buenos, bro. Oh, I got okay. a lot of buenos. Let's see, buenos. Gratitude ride. Thank you very much to everybody who participated, joined us, and came out to the gratitude ride. We were able to raise enough money to not only fulfill the 50 meals turkey day meal order. I think we're going to have some surplus to uh -huh. bless some more people with turkeys. So again, if you know somebody... Or if you are somebody who is in need, just reach out to us. Reach just out to down. us. Yeah, come on down. Let us know what you need, and we will be able to help you out. Yeah. So we'll be doing that today. We'll be handing out some turkey meals today to some people who signed up. Um, Gus and his family whipped up about 20, 25 lunch bags for the neighboring unsheltered folk in our community oh, here. I love that. Because there's a lot, you know? So we, we are going to go ahead and, and hand out some uh, paper bag lunch later on today. It's going to be a big festival later, so drink up. Smoke all of the weed now, because mm. our childrens will be here a little bit later. My or children is here, but okay, yeah. Uh, uh, that, your, Justin, your child, your Justin, child is a Republican. Your child is a registered you. voter. <laughs> whatever help you need, she's here to help. BJ, you were there with me. I'd like to have fucking yeah. Get your stretches in. Get up here, Jay Clip. We got a microphone ready yeah, for you to talk. Glutes over here. We want to. We want to <laughs> talk to Justin. Um, Stand on this fabulous stage. We're going to talk to Justin because about his walk. Him. What he did this week. Uh, he set up a nice little walk to raise awareness for. And he's homelessness. Still doing it. Homelessness. Yeah, this motherfucker's wearing the same outfit that he wore last night. Let's go. Let's go. J Clip. What's happening, man? All right, cool. Leave your feelings at the door. Let's talk about let's talk about this without crying, dog. I seen to you. Oh, I seen to you. Full let's go. Stand up right let's now. Go. Let me tell you about. That's why you put on his glasses so you can't see what, the tears. What's the deal with this coffee? <laughs> <laughs> Airline food. What's up with that? Oh no? Nothing? Mm. Why, why, why are you touching it like that? <laughs> <laughs> Wobbly. It's a little thick. Yeah, man. So that it was dope, man. It was, it was good stuff. Bro. Ladies and gentlemen, J-Clip. Yes. yes. <laughs> thank you. Thank, it was thank dope, you, thank man. You. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. You know, um, I just saw Caesar posted something about it. I'll tell you that last stretch of walking that we all did collectively. That was, <laughs> that was hard. Hey, we mobbed that fucking Why was walk. it hard? Hey, shout out to your partner yeah, too for dude. yelling the entire David way. David Baker, the third. Oh, David, the third. Right? David Baker, the third. David Baker, man. I'll tell you, David Baker, man. We, that, that section from City Heights into, into Chula Vista, we rode on our bikes. Yeah. 
And David, um, and you know, this after all the walking, David's legs seized up, Shit. like in, in, in j- right by the harbor, bro. So like every pedal, dude, was Ouch. it was devastating, man. So yeah, and you're right. Right on top of that, after landing the bikes and walking that last three miles, he still had all that energy. Uh, he gave all of us that. energy. Yeah, bro. Well, yeah. you were able to raise awareness locally in Chula Vista, but right. your walk started in Long Beach. Yeah. Last Monday, we started off in Long Beach at a YMCA out there. And we we basically walked to Anaheim train station, mm. which is like 18 miles. On the way, we stopped at a youth shelter and just kind of had a chance to kind of talk to youngsters and engage with the staff. And, and really, the whole walk itself is just about awareness, and it's about perspective, and it's about us learning and growing together, man. So we just do everything we can to take those voices and, and elevate them. It's funny, too, dude. I've never had in my life someone come up to me to buy meth, bro. But on that walk to, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> walk into Anaheim. I thought that, we weren't going to talk about yeah, this, man. Yeah, I said crazy. I was it, sorry. It was just crazy, bro. It was just crazy to see. <laughs> That's mean. weird, because when I see you, the last thing I think of is drug dealer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, if, oh, I'll be selling all that shit. Yes. We sell hope. Good for yeah. you, man. That's I was cool. excited to be a part of it. I was more excited that wifey came out. I was that more was excited nice. that I saw a whole fucking gaggle of people out there, yeah. out there supporting you, bro. Yeah. We were there for you yeah. and for David Baker, bro. Yeah. You know, and, that. and there was a lot of, yeah, there was a lot of organizations that were there. It was amazing and powerful. If I could use that fucking adjective yeah, yeah. to listen to the two young ladies have gone through the prod, the actual uh, program. Right. Of being an unsheltered teen and then going through the process and becoming, a, you know, a college graduate. Both of them are college graduates. Both of them are very well spoken. And then the one thing that they were really pushing is, hey, don't paint us all with the same brush. Right. Just because exactly. we're homeless, right. just because we're homeless doesn't mean we don't have goals, aspirations, you know, exactly. feelings. Yeah. This And it makes it's true, bro. How many times do we walk down the block and we see somebody who's homeless and we're like, Phew. You just kind of keep it going. You don't even, right. you, you see them, but you're like, I don't want to see them. Yeah. You know, and these young ladies are, are living proof that, bro, oh, man, they're out there trying to get it. Yeah. I want to yeah. say that at least the youngsters that are out there on the streets, it's it's not by choice, man. Yeah, man. I, I would say the number one question I, I'm asked by, by individuals is, are these youngsters out there due to substance abuse, right? And just drug issues or mental health issues. And those are those are reasons for, for some of them being on the streets, but... There's a million other reasons why young people on the streets. I mean, within a 200, within a um, five mile radius of our Border View YMCA, I checked in with Chula Vista Elementary School, and they have just within a five mile radius of the elementary schools in that area, they have over 200 students experiencing housing instability. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Elementary school students. That was one of the main reasons we decided to jump on and link on with John Montgomery Elementary School, man. Because when we spoke to the, the higher ups at that elementary school, they told us. All of, a lot of these households don't have two people in there. Right. And if they do, they're out working. Right. And some exactly. of these people don't have housing. They're living in their cars on exactly. the block that their same school is on, man. Yes. You know, and then, you know, we take a lot, we talk a lot of shit. We talk a lot of shit. Deservedly so. We were dickheads, we're assholes, but we do it for a good reason. You know, so when we had the opportunity to jump in and you, man, you, you played a large part in everything we're doing. Yeah. I, I, I appreciate it, man. I, I love being a part of the group. I, it's I not love, a you, it's a we. I love walking by out front before we like fully got going and then just seeing everyone kind of around this space right here because we Palomar trolley stations all have a hop, skip and a jump from where yep. we're at. And then when we walk As to I our final on destination, that that's a three mile walk. So that tells you that those 200 students are within the area of this yep. location yeah. right here. So yeah. that's our community. That's right? us. That's, that's us, us, man. Yeah, that's so. us. And, and and it's it's important for us to highlight that yeah. and, and put the spotlight on them because we want to make sure if you're doing good in the hood, you just can't talk about it. You got to be about that Real shit. Man. And you being part of that, leading and getting your shine on yeah. KPBS, all yeah. of the news stations, the homie yeah. Joe Little, also from South yeah. Bay, give you a nice yeah. shout yeah. out. Cool, Walk from here, finished up at the YMCA yeah. down at, uh, what is that street? Um, uh, down by Bayer, down down by the, the South, South yeah. Bay, getting close to Palm City in that little area. Not necessarily San Isidro, yeah. but right before. Yeah. You guys did a good job. You went into the family. Uh, YMCA, uh, me and a couple other guys, we just kept going straight and we went to Hoppy Days. <laughs> we, you know, we supported, that was we supported you. <laughs> we, su- said, we supported you from the Hoppy Days, baby. walk with us to that spot. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking, uh, <laughs> El, El, El Copa way. DB Styles out there with his family, bro. Tell me about how Mad that was. Mad love, bro. Mad love to DB Styles to David, man. So, you know. You I want mean, him to do another piece in the warehouse? Yeah. So, when when they got to Borderview, his his old click was right there, man. And what I'll tell you the most beautiful thing is when we came, it's, it's, it's YMCA, so it's a little corny too, right? It's like intentional corniness. We had a little, like, little rope we had to walk through that we had the confetti through. guns we had the confetti guns. yeah but uh um, get those for here one of the elders in db styles dance troupe this lady she was walking through with incense burning for all the walkers oh Yo, my god that was it that was, I was like oh this is so dope dude i'm I was bummed so i missed it yeah Aww. man so it, it, it was for you, beautiful man. man it was a beautiful thing 
the everything about it, man. So I'm this crew, grateful. bro. It's a group of heavy hitters. Yeah. yeah in all honesty, you no, know, there, there's how many are there in the group? Six? Six. We got six, and five of them are top notch. We're waiting for Profe to like metamorph <laughs> and come out of his cocoon and, and rep and and be hard like the rest of us. But everyone else in the group, we really kill it, dog. I mean, let's <laughs> get. <laughs> Why do I always do it to poor Profe, bro? I feel like any opportunity to get good, good. <laughs> Well, you make us incredibly proud. I mean, I just Thank as you. somebody who's only a part of this organization, uh, you know. Go ahead. <laughs> Damn it. I miss it, but if you said it with a smile, so I feel like you're talking um, shit. <laughs> uh, you know, I think I think you make us so incredibly proud. Yes. It was it was I was in Sonora watching you start this and and I was just like, dude, you just um, the the way that you're amplifying these voices and these stories, I think, is so crucially important, especially during a time when people are starting to think about what they're grateful for and what yeah. they're thankful for. Yeah. I say this as somebody who was constantly on the verge of being uh, homeless myself with my daughter mm -hmm. uh, right before even going on MasterChef. Um, you know, we lived in a one bedroom apartment. We shared a house and we were living paycheck to paycheck. And there were months where I was like, am I going to be able to pay the rent? And it's literally those types of people that are just on that precipice of homelessness um, that a lot of us don't even know and end up to your point. Um, me and my daughter have known about kids at her school who um, have also, you know, been living out of their out of their van with their mom. And, and you know, this is a very real thing. And I think um, being able to amplify this message and this voice when people are paying attention is so important. And you make us so fucking proud. And very much so. Um, bro. I, I know I don't speak for everybody in the Patreon, but I, I know for sure I speak for myself and for everything that I stand for. Thank you so much. Seriously, this this means a lot. You have no idea how important what yeah. you're doing yeah. is. And and that's it's huge, man. It's yeah, huge. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Thank you all. Cheers. Huh? Fuck you. <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> to finalize my message, fuck you. <laughs> I, I said it once before Jake about Caesar, G, doggy. but you mm. can tell a lot about a person about the circle that they're in yeah. and the way they treat them. For sure. And this guy, similar to Caesar, everybody I talk to about him fucking loves him yeah. and has a great story about him. Like all the YMCA higher ups and coworkers of yours, like that I got a chance to talk to. It was like. They all fucking love you, dude. Well, stick and around. I have some more stories about him if you really want to hear him, dog. Hey, you I let me know. Callate, <laughs> baboso! Callate, baboso! I, dude, I haven't used that one in a while. Let me use that one. Let me use that one. Callate, baboso! That's the one I need. That's the one we need. We all need one of those buttons. He's a stud. He's on our squad. He's one of us. It's a it's a collective we. He shows how to represent the emo brown social media. Amen. There it is. There it is. Oh, shit. Exactly. Not, not wrong. Oh, shit. Look at him. <laughs> Not even what I meant, but okay. We got <laughs> My last algo bueno, you know, not to, you know, I should have waited to fucking have him that be the last one, but this one's a little bit better. Hey guys. Oh my God. Fu's Gone Wild reached out, Casas. What, what are we doing? Bueno. Wait, what? Bueno. Fu's Gone Wild reached out to us again. What are we doing? We are going to bring Pisto back. Hey. Pisto will be back for Another its third one. installment. And uh, then we'll see what happens after that. So we're going to start the process of, and I see online like, oh good, it's going to be ready. But World Cup, I said, hey. <laughs> That's not how this works. Maybe next <laughs> World Cup. There's there's things that need to be put into place. But hey, bottom line, Pistol's coming back. Nice. Let's see what happens. We'll keep Secure killing it. The bag. Look at that. The Foo himself. There he is. El Mayor of Fooville. And where is he at? <laughs> right there he's at. Three the other, punk, bro. The other day really? I found a couple of people who didn't know what Foo's Gone Wild is. Good. Don't. How would you explain Foo's Gone Wild? To, Imagine, somebody that, to somebody that isn't from like our culture, you know. What culture are they from? It doesn't matter. Well, it does because that's how the the uh, metaphor it, I'm going to come in. It was a it it's was like, a, it was a black woman oh, like right, exactly. I don't know. TMZ. See what I'm it's like TMZ or Perez Hilton. He gives what? he gives the old yeah. He's got all the killer memes, all the killer videos, all the killer cheese man. He just it's, it's cultural comedy. Okay. Sin barreras. If you're talking to an older TMZ white lady, you just tell him it's a lifestyle that means that He brings the cheese, man. He brings the me gusta cheese, man. You know, he, yeah. he brings you some of that news, and it's pretty funny. It, I found it hard. I was like, um, well, like, it's uh, funny memes, and uh, Mexican like, I was world like, star? fuck, this is hard. Oh. Mexican world star. I'll go with that. What do you, you think, Casas? Okay, good job. Yeah, <laughs> Mexican well, world I'll, star. I'll, he gives a thumbs up. All right, like, cool. Sure, sure, yeah, sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever. Yeah, that's a good <laughs> he gives two hornies up. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good. That's a good one. I get. Yeah. Okay. That's a good so one. So stay tuned. Okay. More shit coming for the LA region from Three Punk and Chula Vista. Give me some chales. Go ahead. Give me a chale there, BJ Jasbera. Uh, well, I mean, my chale is. It's more of a reminder because oh. of a chale, but I don't know if we're allowed to get into that chale. But I just, it's gonna be short and sweet. Just fucking tell the people you love that you love them, and maybe. Start loving some more people and telling them because you never know 
when it's going to be the last time you get to say, I love you to somebody. You, know? you are dancing around an issue, my friend. I, you are tiptoeing around an issue. This weekend, we had a friend, a neighbor, a patron, a compa, a homie, somebody that the Chula Vista has grown to love, especially on Third Avenue, pass away. Passed oh. away pretty unexpectedly. Passed away pretty rapidly. You know, and not our story to tell, but our story to tell is that we will miss this guy. He was very loved, very appreciated, very looked up to in the community. Went by the name of Third Avenue Ruben. Third Avenue Ruben, Ruben Alvarez. I don't know if anyone out there celebrates with a shot when somebody passes to the next level, but you know who does? I do. And I'll be selling. Right, yeah. I even wore my little Third Avenue pin for him, a little Third Avenue Ruben action. Ruben Alvarez, you will be missed. He wasn't. He, hey, he was a pillar of our community on Third Avenue for sure. I saw our family saw him every day. They lived. He, he lived right around the neighborhood, um, walking his dog. Uh, always going to the brewery. Always. He's a patron, a supporter of all things Third Avenue. He will be missed. I used to bust his balls. Like, the one way you know I love somebody if it's like, fuck with you, bro. So if I don't fuck with you, I just don't fuck with you. You know, I just don't fuck with you. But if I fuck with you, it's because I love you. You know, yeah. and then this dude, all right, he, he he was definitely somebody that, you know, you, you grew accustomed to seeing on the daily. You yeah. grew accustomed to being around always. So it was like, it, it was it was a gut punch when when I heard the news that uh, our, our boy Ruben Alvarez passed. For you, compita. Salucita. May your journey be a very pleasant one, my friend. Mm, mm, mm. Dickhead, that was my chalet too. Yes. <laughs> okay. That was, that's, that's that was my chalet too, man. Big chalet, man. Well, I, I don't don't have the privilege of knowing your friend, but I have right. a big problem not being emotional. And I think a lot of people read that. You know, we've talked. And then we a lot of people read that as being like, I don't care, I'm disconnected. I just don't fucking connect. Like I don't I don't want to be emotionally vested. I know fucking Clint. Clint. Justin, J Clip was up my ass this weekend because another one of our homies was telling me how his, one of his friends passed away. And for me, it's like, all right, sorry, man. I don't know your dude. I, I just can't, I don't want to get into this like bubble of mourning for so I don't know him. So like, for me, it's disrespectful to fake the funk. But when this happened and I was like, you know, I'm not faking the funk. This is a homie. You know, Third, Third Avenue Ruben is a homie. He, it's going to be weird because I just saw him on, on Friday. Shit. He passed away son, um, Saturday morning and I saw him Friday. Um, afternoon early evening he brought some fish tacos to the brewery and i taxed him dog i took a, i took more than my fair share of fish tacos and, I, and he said oh who ate him i was like i did you don't need all these fish tacos fool you know so and it's just weird you guys i, I make fun of me because i well, wifey makes fun of me because i'll always talk to wifey and tell her like i love you i'm going somewhere yeah i love you uh if something happens take care of my kids Make sure they're, you know, and, and, and it's weird. And she's like, oh, you're so fucking, um, what is the word? Come on, say. Fatalistic? No. Dr dramatic? Dramatic is one that she uses often, yes. Uh, you, you're so uh, morbid. You're so dark. Oh, and I was morbid. like, you know what? Maybe, but one day will come where yeah. that will be my last goodbye. Totally. So I want to make sure anytime I get an opportunity, it's not wait till somebody fucking dies to highlight them and, 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 and put them under the spotlight and, uh, and be like, oh, this was a stand-up homie. Do that shit every day, and be that. you know, do That's that shit every day. So, like yeah. So what I tell wifey and the kiddos or my mom or anybody I care about is like, hey, I love you. Take care of my kids. If, if something happens, take care of my wife. If something happens, you're such a Dylan more, more. I don't know what that means. Who's that? 90210. Go ahead. Dylan. He did that. He was like the, the morbid dark shirt wearing bad boy. That's you. Okay. <laughs> I'm more of a Brandon Walsh because I have a gambling That's problem. That's the thing. No, but but okay. you're, a, you're a Dylan. A straight up Dylan. <laughs> nah, but yeah, man, you know, from shit grows flowers and as a community, we'll do everything we can to help. People he left behind, you know, he has a young daughter and she's a killer at everything she does. The one thing that my dude Ruben always was never short on words for is the love he had for his daughter and how proud of her, of her she was with all the events. She's a BMXer, very wow. intelligent in school. Young lady's going to be a fucking stud when she grows up. That's the only thing we can do. We can't cry for people who are gone. You know, why? There's no need to cry. We, we, they've left a better place and we're just here kind of like, oh, so the only thing we can do is like, what's up, pinchy movie, Coco? Never let their memory fade and take exactly. care of the people they left behind, man. And celebrate them. And that is my sappy part of the day today. But yeah, big ups to Ruben. I love you, doggy. Wherever you are, we will always remember you. Cheers. Give me a chat. Damn, we came with that fucking sadness today, bro. But see, look at unfazed. You're still a fucking idiot. Uh, there's certain things and people that like... They pass and it doesn't affect me, but when Ruben, uh, yeah, well, because we see Ruben every fucking day. He was. I see Ruben every day at the brewery, bro. I see Ruben every day walking on fucking welcome on walking in front of our house. I see Ruben every day walking his dog every fucking day, walking with his daughter, driving by with his daughter every day. He's probably somebody like outside of the family that I saw because he lives right around the corner, and he would honk in his forerunner like, and then I would go, you know, like because that's <laughs> yeah. just you know that's yeah. just how I love them, but. 
it, it's going to be sad, man. It's going to be sad, but just like anything else, community will pull us through and we'll do the same thing to pull his family through. Yeah. Charlie, moment of the week for you. He always said, I love you. To you? Unfortunately, I brought something similar. Um, Jason David Frank, who was one of the original Power Rangers, has died. Um, The actor and mixed martial artist died in Texas, according to his rep. Um, Sources with direct knowledge tell us his death was as a result of suicide. Um, And so I thought, you know, one, um, the holidays, um, the economy, um, we're just talking about, you know, how everybody's struggling right now. There's a lot of inflation things. All of our purse strings are tightening up. I see a lot of people posting more and more about that, posting funny memes about like, how the hell are all these people going to all these fucking concerts? If I don't have money to pay for rent, it's, I didn't, I didn't pay for those. Remember? <laughs> listen, <laughs> listen, <laughs> listen, <laughs> listen, <laughs> no, listen, like I, I get it. I get it because I'm definitely one of those people that's struggling right now. Like I haven't had work in months, so Um, I just wanted to bring this up because not only is it a chale, because, um, I grew up watching the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers and, um, I had, that was like my first crush was like the green Power Ranger, um, that turned into the white Power Ranger, if you guys remember. Racer and evil. Yes, (laughs) remember? I don't think I ever watched the Power Rangers. Get filled. Yeah, I never, I never (laughs) watched it, dog. I was, I'm older than you guys, I think. Yeah. I'm older than you for sure. Like I got you by fucking 10. Well, the, it debuted in 1993. How old were you? 1993, I was 34. older than 10. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I was 10. I had a pack of cigarettes in my arm band. Jesus. I was, you See, know, a little. such a Dylan. A little, I don't even know. A little, a little fifth bottle of Jim Beam in my back pocket, bro. I used to light my joints with a, a little fucking match on the bottom of my chucks. <laughs> no, that was a fucking, that was Fonzie, bro. Yeah, I was just um, nah, not never watch that shit. No, yeah. I, I think I was like 13. I was cool, bro. It's I was fucking cool. Charlie. I yeah. think for a lot of us that, that are in my age range. How old are you? Or is that something we don't talk about? Is that rude? I'm under 40. You're under 40? All right. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm Damn, in the under 40. I'm fucking old, bro. She's um, a so millennial. Yeah, so Gather around, children. I have a story I'm an to tell. Elder millennial, remember? <laughs> elder millennial. Um, so yeah, so I, you know, that's obviously my chale because I grew up with that. It's like one of my childhood. You know, he was only forty. What, what did I say? Forty nine, um, passing away. And so I think it's just like it's too young. And um, I just want to remind everybody out there that there is a hotline. Nine eight eight is now the number that you can call um, if you are in that weird place um, or reach out to any one of us. Um, I don't. Maybe not, Steve. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's true. I'm just kidding. But reach out to somebody. We love you. We don't want you to go anywhere. And even though things may seem like it's rough out there, because it is. And I think honesty and authenticity and saying it is fucking rough out there for all of us right now, um, you know, allows other people to be seen and feel as though they're being heard. So um, it's rough out there. If it's fucking rough out there for me, bitch, I know it's rough out there for a lot of people. So, um, you know, you're not alone. And um, my my DMs are always open. My phone is on 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And I say that to you guys, friends. Um, everybody in here, if you guys have my phone number, you can call me 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I've lost a friend to suicide. I do not want to lose anybody else. Mm. So, um, end of the year, mental health end. one month, but it needs to be end of the year, year man. Round. This is this is like during the holiday yeah, season. People I feel, feel the like, pressure. Yeah, yeah. People feel the pressure, and, and like me and my family, like my mom. I don't. I don't know if you guys remember a couple of podcasts back. Like my mom had to pay something like thirty thousand dollars to fix her sewer, and we just said, "Mom, like we're just not going to do. We're not going to do Christmas presents this year. That's okay." There's good years and there's fucking bad years. And this is just one of those bad years. So mm. we're just doing a little turkey. We're doing like, you know, minimal things necessary. None of us have like the money to go out there and spend all this money. And that's fine. What we're grateful for and what we're thankful for is for us being together, for having this community where we can all hang out and talk shit and have fun um, and celebrate people like Justin and doing really awesome things in the hood. But yeah, I think that that's what we should really focus on. It's not about what you're giving out in money and material shit that, 90% of the time we're going to throw away anyway, mm. you know, Very like true. let's, let's Very just, true. let's just spend being time being grateful for fucking being around our family and our friends. Did we fucking like turn into a nice little heartfelt warm podcast today? Bro? It was. I these imposters that are like, like, okay. <laughs> making me feel Who are we? We lived up to the emo brown moniker today, fool. Let's talk some oh, shit. Let's man. talk some yeah, shit. Some let's shit get some talk. Yahweh's. What do we got on the Yahweh moment of the week, fool? I'll start with you because you're white and white people are often overlooked in our community. Said no one ever. What the fuck, fool? Hey. Shit, go ahead. Swap me, people. Swap me. Am I right? (laughs) Am I right? I knew you were going to come through, BJ. I knew you were going to come through. Dude. Okay, so Fernando and I went to- Swap meet people. Swap meet people. People who visit Swap meet or people who like 
post up and sell shit at swap meet. Yeah, which, I'm assuming both because right, hey, watch your mouth, bro. Because my we love going to the swap meet, motherfucker. Watch your mouth. Well, let me tell you from an insider's perspective because I've never sold at the swap meet before. Only been a purveyor of goods. Go ahead. Oh, that's wait, that's the guy who sells shit, huh? Yes. Well, I tried. Consumer I of goods. I, thank you. I took a swing, but this time we were the purveyor. Go ahead. Uh, Fernando and I went to go and you know just clear out some space and instead <laughs> of like you know throwing out Pete's old toys and clothes and shit or. Whatever, we're just like, let's take it to the swap meet so we can and donate the rest, you yeah. know? Have another kid. Give it to them. We have three boys. My youngest, where is the fucking 10 year old's clothes you know, still? Pete's pretty than- big. So if you, uh, you know, you got a little kid out there, you can you can have all the old shit. But uh, fucking, it was just nuts. Like, we went there at 6 a.m. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which apparently is late. <laughs> it's very late. <laughs> very late. <Yeah>. Damn, <laughs> tell me you're white without telling me you're white. Is this your first swap meet? Yeah, no, the- 6 a.m. Oh my God, we got there at 7 30 and they were out of bagel. <laughs> tell me, <laughs> La, tell me you go to sleep at 2 a.m. <laughs> and 6 a.m. is late. But we went and, you know, we set up and we're like, as soon as we got both of our car doors open, oh, yeah, we they're both already there. The people from the other stands yeah. were coming out, oh, yeah. like yeah. haggling us down, yeah, trying bro. to get yeah. our shit and flip it over there. And yeah. like, we made the mistake of being like, these are all just like people buying shit. Yeah. Uh-huh. And we'd see somebody like grab something, like buy it, talk us down. Like, we got haggled so hard. Good. And they'd run across the fucking like and parking lot to their shit. And, and yeah, they flip it. So we learned real quick. We got mm-hmm. real callous mm-hmm. real quick. We mm-hmm. held to our prices and shit. It was a fun little you opportunity. You sold everything out? Mm, all the good shit. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Cool. But that's good. So the BJ just bears greatest hits. Unfortunately, didn't find a home. It, it, that, <laughs> that went back home with you. <laughs> I sold a hundred CDs. Did okay. you really physically a hundred CDs? That day at Swap Meet. There. At Swap Meet. No, in the last like nine years, uh, <laughs> I've gone aluminum. Okay. You're a dumb motherfucker. <laughs> But my hallway turned into another bueno because fucking Mr. Cesar Torres showed up. Okay. And he hung out with us. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, you know, it was just fun. And then we turned that into a trip to Ponce's. And you know how Ponce's goes. Oh, I know how Ponce's and you <laughs> goes, bro. I took Fernanda this time. Well, like, I, I don't know. What does well, that mean? Well, let me mean? tell you what Ponce's and fucking BJ I'm turns into. I'm all FOMO as fuck. What the so fuck? So we... we we motherfucker, I said we, Justin. We Whoa. like to go and uh, do volunteer work at stri- a Snapdragon. Strippers? No, stri- <laughs> strip dragon. We like to volunteer and take our clothes off. No, we like to volunteer and sell beer, you know, for the foundation at Snapdragon. Yeah. So we've done that before. And guess what, guys? Perfect opportunity. We're going to be doing that shit again. We're oh. going to be doing that shit again this Saturday, November 26th. The whole crew's going. All the foundations going, and we're going to be handpicking a few more people. We'd like to get at least 12 people out there. And to do what? Uh, sell beer, sling beer, pour beer, give beer, smile, tell a c- crazy story. It's be a good happy. chance to learn how your favorite activity works in the behind smoke, the scenes. Smoke, What's we- the event? smoke weed in the cold box with BJ and me. <laughs> oh, oh, we're going to call, we're gonna no, call they, names. They, it's, there's, a, there's just, there's either, <clears throat> we got a contract as a foundation to work with uh, Snapdragon, and whether it's a concert, whether it's yeah, the, so the wave. What is it? What is this weekend? It's like a football match? What's going on? It's some it's some sporting event. I mean, maybe somebody wants yeah. to like low-key watch it. From yeah. No, it's not, like not, not, not a concert. No, but I know the guy who sings Margaritaville. So My tell uncle? your parents, tell your parents to come on down and check out that dude. They're gonna be he's gonna be playing at Snapdragon. So bottom line, we we volunteer, we make money, raise money, sell beers. We did that one time. Yeah. And then we took this weenie to Ponce's with us. Oh no, what oh, happened? Yo, everything happened. Oh. Uh, but we know he can't drink or smoke very well, apparently now. He couldn't hang that day. We took him to Ponce's and he started pounding well, maybe margaritas. I do them too well. well. <laughs> <laughs> we started drinking margaritas, having a good time. And then this motherfucker just like starts like someone freaking I- out. He starts freaking out. He's like, my wife's going to be mad at me. We're like, bro, like, duh, my wife's going to be mad at me. I got to get home. So like he called no, no, her. It wasn't my wife's going to be mad at me. She called me and yeah. was mad at me. So I grabbed the phone and I started talking to his wife. Oh, and yeah. I said, hey, muñeca, tranquila. <laughs> BJ is with us. Ain't none happening to him. He's a great dancer. We're going we're gonna to go take him to his pad. He's not driving. He's going to be A-OK. And I, I gave the phone back. She's like, hey, your girl's good. Everything. It's like. It went next level. No, bro. She's fucking mad. I'm going to sleep on the couch. I'm going to do this. Like, ah, relax. He freaks out. So we don't take him to punches anymore. Steve we don't take him anywhere. talk about buttons, you know, mm. and I don't have many buttons. My only button is family. I'm mm. very Vin Diesel in that fact. So Vin Diesel. When I heard. <laughs> what does that mean? He's all about no family. Way. You guys don't watch fucking. No. Fast no. And no. no people are my hang out there. Looking people who don't watch that We're shit. We're going to do a marathon. F- how many versions of Vin Diesel have you seen? Every version, even in Saving Private oh, Ryan, Vin cool. Diesel is all about family. Vin Diesel came out in Saving Private Ryan? Oh, yeah. Oh, Vin Diesel was the dude from Brooklyn. Yeah. Yeah, he tried protecting he the little, first. He saved that a little girl from yeah. a falling building. And <laughs> fucking Tom Hanks told him, 
Cause Spar's old. Don't go oh, get the fucking kid. I right. got you. I'm yeah. all about family. No, and you roots. fucking idiot. Leave the kid there. <laughs> I've got to go get the kid. I'm from Brooklyn. I We're all about now. family. That's right. So he got the kid. He got the kid, and then the, he got shot. So he grabs the kid by the hair and, and throws the kid yeah. into like a French villa. And the kid lands on a chair with a baguette in her hand and mm. some cappuccino and just mm. chilling. And Casparzo, he's dying. And now we out. have the Statue of Vin, Liberty. Yep, Vin Diesel. Now I understand. Vin Diesel. So yeah, bottom line, don't take this white guy to Ponce's unless his wife is with him. Take fucking. me to Ponce's. We took Pete, too. Yeah? Well, no wonder you were on your best behavior, yeah. fool. Good time, good time. Only one michelada. <laughs> <laughs> Michi. Give me with that Michi. fucking chale, Yahweh, all of the things. My Yahweh is, unfortunately, the Colorado shooting. Unfortunately. Jesus Christ, man. This is, I know. I, I we're going to have to Casas, if there is some sort of like fucking, I don't know. Do you have a small violin over there? Not even that. I just no, need you to. No, you guys don't fucking do that. I need you to flash like a, like, hey, it's Trigger about alert. to get deep. It's about to get deep. It's, it's about, about to, get to get deep. deep. Like, I don't know what that's called, but I need that shit on this episode for sure. Go ahead. A warning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So unfortunately, five people were shot dead and 25 injured. The reason why I'm bringing it up and why I'm like, what the fuck is because the shooter has been linked to as the grandson to the outgoing MAGA assembly member, Randy Vopel from guess where? San Diego. Santee. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So that, that really, that hurts. That hurts. That's a, that's a gut punch, if you will. That is a gut punch. And I'm not trying to say, obviously that his grand, the grandparent is responsible for the grandson's actions, not by any means, but, but Randy Vopel was uh, somebody that specifically went out of his way to say that uh, the January 6th insurrection was the beginning of, uh, of the American revolution, the second American revolution. So he this is wrong. somebody, this is somebody that, wrong. that obviously is very, um, you know, very anti-institution. And um, so it really bums me out um, as somebody who has three brothers and sisters who are part of the LGBTQI plus uh, community. Then uh, obviously this one really hurts. Um, are we surprised? What happened? I really, I really no. did not follow the story. He went in there with stories. like, he went in there with a, with a rifle and um, pretty much just started shooting. Uh, 25 people were injured of those 25, 19 were gunshot wounds. Um, so that just tells you how many fires he, he got out there. But two people went up to him right away. Um, and and those two people died. Uh, but those two people were the ones that apprehended him and were able to make him stop shooting. So they actually saved all of the other people. You so it would have been much larger. You always hear about people. Oh, well, if I was there, I would have fucked that guy up. No, that literally these, happened. These motherfuckers time. actually did it. This time they actually did that. And so they prevented a much larger uh, catastrophe. Uh, but yeah, five people unfortunately um, passed away. And, it's, and it is one of two gay um like uh nightclubs in that area so um everybody knows so about that was this targeted place. it was a target oh, it was 100 yeah. percent targeted mm. um and i mean we 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 can't dismiss the fact that there has been a lot of um anti-lgbtq um legislation uh you know rhetoric from from the far right um and that's not to say that everybody that's a republican calm down um but the far right has really been um all about um, kind of having that anti-LGBTQ, anti-trans, um, anti-everything. And so I, I thought that it was necessary to bring that up. But um, the police received numerous 911 calls starting at 1156. Um, officers were dispatched by 1157. It says that 39 police officers responded um, and fire department, you know, said 11 ambulances were on the scene. Uh, the gunman appeared heavily armed and wearing a military, a military style flak jacket. As he arrived to the club, the club owners told the New York Times, um, citing that the review of the surveillance footage, that, um, he said that the gunman entered with tremendous firepower. Um, people thought it was music, so they kept dancing. Um, and then it was like it wasn't until they heard more gunshots that they were like, "Oh shit! It, this is like actual gunshot." Um, I'm like DJs. Can we stop using like yeah, does that you sound know like something sounds we have in that our music? sound? You know, you know what I'm saying. Like, is that like is that possible? But <laughs> like that, yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. pretty much. <laughs> um, the first the first customer saved um, that um, one one of the customers took the gunman down and was assisted by another. Um, he saved dozens Fuck. and dozens of lives. Um, they stopped the man cold. Everyone was running away as. Um, you know, as this person ran toward him, authorities initially said that there was 18 people who were injured, but later adjusted that total to number 25. So. Well, it's good to see authorities actually came in and did some shit. Oh, you, you mean not like... Unlike some other spots. Oh, Uvalde? Have you, have you seen some of the, the footage that's been leaked after that? From Uvalde? Yeah, they were yeah. like, hey, I don't want to go in there. You want to go in there? I don't want to risk my life. I don't yeah. even want to like, talk about it. Things really are crazy. Bad. Yeah. Things are crazy these days in America. Yeah. In the world, but I feel like more here, bro. What the fuck? I just fuck hate is that it was on? linked to San Diego in general. Like, God, can we Yahweh? Yeah. 
we're good. I mean, fucking San Diego is awesome, but it's it's a microcosm of the world. This is you true. know, like it, it, there's shit in everywhere. I mean, again, it's not a Republican, it's not a Democrat thing, it's not a red, it's not a blue. Like we were talking earlier, most of us are purple. Yeah. You know, most of us draw shit that we like from the red. Most of us draw shit we like from the blue. Exactly. And somewhere in the middle is where I hang out. I agree. Do I agree with everything that the fucking uh, Democrats and liberals do? Hell no. no. There's a lot of shit that these motherfuckers do that we don't agree. you're ignorant to connect to. It's like, that doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. Same goes for the other side. If I look at the red, I'm like, oh, fuck that. I don't want to connect with that. Exactly. You just got to be smart about your shit. But some of these people, like right now, post-election, they live or die by the color of the fucking flag that they're waving. And, and, and veil it as patriotism, mm. which is the worst part. Crazy anyway, times. That is not who we are, guys. That's not what we stand for. We stand with our LGBTQ. People. In addition to that, my, yeah. my Yahweh kind of is on that level. Teams were going to wear the One Love R band mm. that dealt with the whole, it had all the rainbow colors. You yeah. know, v very proud, very like unifying. Somewhere along the way, it didn't happen. So there's been a lot of conversation about World Cup. So World Cup is my Yahweh moment of the week. Check out the fucking pod, uh, the episode on Netflix called FIFA Uncovered. You want to see some shit? You want you want to see some fucking see some shit? Yeah, Wait, FIFA Uncovered. FIFA Uncovered. You want to oh, see no. some? Yeah, you want to see some? It? It, Pablo it, Cacahuates. It's on Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> But basically, it goes over the corruption and everything that goes in in FIFA, uh, the Football International Federation of Association. Basically, anything dealing with, with soccer is run by FIFA. Yeah, it's like yeah, a monopoly, yeah. and it, they've done a lot of good, but they pulled back the curtain, and they showed you a lot of the shit that they've oh, done. Shit. A lot of the shit that Dennis, how it's corrupt, how there's mob ties, how the fucking Department of Justice stepped up and tried to dismantle it, how they arrested like 15 board members. So I'm keeping an eye on fucking Justin, Gus, and Caesar. <laughs> Chicle and me are good, but you got to keep an eye on those guys because they're going to get arrested, and I'm just saying it's like there's corruption from the bottom to the top. Damn. And there's like, how do you guys go about the selection process of where the World Cup is going to go? How did it go from Brazil to fucking Russia to now Qatar? Yeah. Money, baby. Money. Cash yeah, rules everything money, around. They got a lot of money in Qatar and they threw a lot of them their way. So there's a lot of conversation right now how FIFA has lost Credibility. their product. Their product. Like it's it's been taken from them. Yeah. Because now all of a sudden it's like they can't. They, Going to the highest yeah, bidder. They can't celebrate, you know. Uh. One love. It doesn't matter your 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 religion, oh, your creed, shit, your right, sect. You know, so, they're in Qatar. yeah. So they remove that and said, "Hey, so how much of the World Cup does FIFA really own right now, currently?" Because they took that away really quick. And shit. if that doesn't touch you, this next thing they took away from the fucking World Cup will. They took away fucking beer consumption inside of the stadium. I stadiums. don't understand that. I heard Budweiser was a major sponsor. Every four years, Budweiser. Did they tell Budweiser yeah, that? No, no, every four they years. They paid Budweiser. Oh, yeah. I don't want to be on that side. Shit. Bye. They already paid, bro. Qatar yeah. already played. No. $75 million is the contract that fucking Budweiser oh. pays every four years to be the beer, the face of everything World Cup related. They said, not this fucking year. We don't Ooh, want any that. beer here. Oh, and you think it's about the religion? No, you can still have beer a, a, a inside of a stadium. You just got to be in the luxury suites. No. Yeah, so you can Whoa. still have beer no and liquor away and all the liquor you want. You just have to so be part just, of a. Just the people that yeah, are in the stands can't have beer. No fucking beer. Are you fucking kidding me? Not at all. Not at all. You want to hold hands with your boyfriend? You want to hold hands? I'm not even talking homosexuality. You want to fucking kiss your wife, your husband, whatever? You better fuck around and find out because you'll go to jail. Jesus. You can get arrested for not being married That's and insane. kissing your partner and holding their hands. Yeah. You want to fucking fuck they around like Casas big and roll around just wearing a thong, doing your thing? You big can't do that shit, Casas. You can't, you can't no, fucking I mean, do that shit in Qatar, bro. I've definitely known that. <laughs> so that's what they're that's saying right now. Things. Like, that's right crazy. now, it's like fucking FIFA is under the under the gun, under the microscope. It's like, dog, you don't even own World Cup anymore. What Qatar do you think? paid, and now you have no more beer in the stadium. Right now, you can't even wear a fucking armband that represents everyone under the fucking sky. Yeah. Like, like, we hate even, love. You, yeah, you, yeah, fuck love. You know, you can't do that here. This is about soccer. Let me play devil's advocate. Go ahead. <laughs> you, for example, the other day said, what if we separate the artist from mm -hmm. the product, right? Why, why would this be different? If we want this to be a world event, why can't we understand that other parts of the world have different rules and different things? I mean, I, I'm just saying it and I'm not saying that I agree because you guys just heard me. I am mm -hmm. all about uh, protecting rights and I understand that Qatar has very um, specific, I'm trying to mind my words, very specific rules because of their heritage and because of their um, 
religious beliefs. Their so culture. If, yeah, their culture, their religion. A lot of it is their religious beliefs. But what is to say that, you know, that if we are going to say, hey, we're going to include the world, then why do we get to pick and choose? Like, Qatar isn't the only place that this has been played where all of these things. I mean, what happened with Brazil? How many people did were they exploiting when Brazil was happening? In Brazil, they also have a heavy alcohol ban for their games because they endure violence when people drink and everything. I mean, I'm just saying. FIFA like, came down and said, no. And this is a, this is the quote that they came out that really? came out from the head. Of, you cannot separate the World Cup from beer consumption. World Cup is about this. It's about that. Until somebody came with a bigger paycheck and said, nah, motherfucker, you ain't going to have any beer here. So the oh, $75 million. Okay, so there is some like hypocrisy mm-hmm. to oh, it. it. it FIFA yeah. is all hypocrisy. Got it. It's all it is. You Got know, it. it's all it is. coming and enjoying the culture yeah, and, and, and supporting the rules because this is just the way we are. It's so more about what makes the most money. In 2008, roughly, is when mm. they chose the uh, location for this year's World Cup, 2022. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it was between Japan. And it was between the U.S. and it was between Qatar. Yeah. You know, and they said, okay, we want to grow this fucking sport globally. We want to do these things. Woo woo. You know, in the the best way possible to represent FIFA and what it is. (laughs) The smart move would have been Japan or the U.S., you know, because that's where, you know, growth is going to be. Right. You know, it represents more freedoms, more this, more that, the other. No, they went to the highest bidder. But and they think, didn't know they get into bed. But do you think that that's getting getting a sport into politics? Oh yeah, and they said they're not. They said it's a world thing. Watch FIFA on cover. Do you, do you, I mean, Oof. that's all I'm saying. Oof. It's a, I do not agree. It's a crazy I am 100 percent on yours. It's but, a crazy but since thing. we are here to provide all of the different perspectives, Ooh. the other perspectives that I've heard are. We need to be careful with what we're saying because in that case, then we should never be going to China again. Mm. Same, same, same kind of things came up when the when the Olympics happened in China, mm. right? Or in uh, Russia, exactly. Exploitation. So that's how so, we so feel like, here, so, but what about the Chinese people? Ex- exploitation that, like, of third world. Go see the Olympics. Look at exploitation yeah. of so, migrant workers going to build these things. You know how many people fucking died building stadiums here for this World Cup? Let alone in Russia for the Olympics. Yeah. Let alone in Russia for the previous World Cup. Let yeah. alone in fucking Brazil. Fuck what you heard. Yeah. It's all about money. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter. And it doesn't a, matter. And, that's, and that, that's, I think, my point, right? Like, I think if, if we're going to, like, if you're going to say fuck, fuck them because of this, well, then fuck everybody else too, no? Yeah. Because my argument last week was, if you're going to say fuck Michael Jackson for doing this shit to little kids, then why can't we say fuck Dave Chappelle for talking shit about LGBTQ? You can. Do you see what I'm saying? No, you, you totally can. So I'm just, I'm, I'm going to still playing, go check him out next week. What's cracking? I'm going to see Dave <laughs> Chappelle. I'm going to see fucking Chris Rock. That's all I'm saying. I'm not, I'm not. Not fucking agreeing with any of this shit, nah. and I need to watch that shit. I saw it come up, mm-hmm. but I've, I haven't had time. There's a thing. There's too much shit to go to war with amongst ourselves that are completely out of our control. Yep. Completely over our head. Completely out. Completely out of our power. Yeah. You just got to choose. You know what? how there is a power. Go ahead. I'm not fucking watching the games. There you go. I see it below. Así de pelado. Así de I'm not going to give them one more fucking viewer. And that, you know and what? That's how important Qatar is to me. And Fuck I've, them. I'm and not I, watching good one for fucking you. game. I've never heard that fucking stance until this World Cup. I have all I'm other, all, all no other World Cups. No all other World Cups are all about like Shakira coming out and singing a fucking song and bringing everyone together. And now the world is involved and everyone's like gracious and this. This fucking World Cup, people are like saying, nah, I ain't in. You know, yeah. pe- fucking players from teams that are playing, they're like, you know what? I'm injured. I can't fucking play. Yeah. And a lot of people are like, bitch, you ain't injured. You just played with your fucking your, this is soccer. Your We're club all team. Injured. Yeah. yeah, so, yeah, now, yeah, yeah. so now players are slowly like removing themselves. Yeah. And then there's rumors. You know, you can't talk shit in the stands. First off, we would have been canceled a long time ago. Uh, well, we can't go to World Cup game because you can't, can't talk shit. Fuck. Yeah, you can't, <laughs> no, you yes. can't talk <laughs> shit no, to people in the stands. Word. So there was a, a, a guy who took his family to the World Cup and it was Ecuador contra Qatar. <laughs> and he was like talking shit. And he was like throwing his hands up like money, looking around like, hey, ha, 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 you know. And there was some shit, some dude in, a, in the whole garb, like come up and just start talking shit. So I'm like, blah, 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 blah. and it's like, damn fool. They're not fucking around over there. And no. they buried him in money. Nothing about that experience right now seems like an enjoyable process. Nah. Big ups to the homies that went out there. I got a lot of homies that went out to fucking Qatar to watch Mexico play. Big up to them. But hey, we have we have friends. I know out there what the fuck you guys shit. are about. So you guys better Qué be valor, careful. You, you guys better be fucking careful over there. You know me. I like to gamble. Daddy made a little money today. Mm. I will watch these games. Yeah. If, you know, to each their own. Yes. To each their own. I am not here to pass judgment on anybody who does anything for themselves and the betterment of their family. Yeah, yeah. And in turn, like, God, that, that's the way I feel like. I feel like if you're coming on my door and you're knocking on my door and you're trying to pass, like, because um, I, 
example I had this weekend, we had a couple of older ladies that come to the door and they said, sir, I'd like to read a uh, passage for me from the Bible. And I was like, fuck, I answered Slam. the door. No, 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 no bro. Nah, para nada. I looked around, I turned around, and my kids were on the couch watching what I was going to do. And I looked behind the door and my wife, he was over. I was like, the whole family. And I was like, and I was like, you know what? For sure. And then like, really? He's like, yeah, go, go. And then she read, bah, bah, bah. the message was, you know, uh, Jesus is all about love and making sure that everyone around the world is, is showing love. And, and, and she read it. She said, thank you for listening. And that was it. It would have been harder to just say, no, I'm not about this life. Don't fucking bring your religion yeah. to me. I said, you know what? I opened up my fucking heart, bro. <laughs> I opened yeah, we'll up my heart. We'll and I Nobody allowed believed you. <laughs> <laughs> no, the ladies. Yo, the, the ladies. Heart grew the ladies size. You the made their fucking day, man. Yes. You made their day. You know how many people did. do just fucking and, slam? And you know what? Way. And she's like, she almost was caught up. Psalm 37, Aww. hermana, 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 Psalm 37. Aww. And so they started reading it and I was like, all right, cool. Do you want me to pick up your bags? Ma'am, please don't touch my Dixon bag. Leave my Dixon bag where it belongs. I'll grab it right now. Because I thought she was going to run off with it, bro. She had that look in her eye. I'm all about religion, Casas. You really got to stop emphasizing the mm, mm. when you're saying Dixon mm. something Dixon. else. Because that's the last week you're like, <laughs> Dixon shirts. I'm like, you bought Dicks and shirts? No, I bought Dicks in your <laughs> mouth. Let's go ahead and take a break. Okay. And then we're going to bring, oh shit, Laser Latino. A la madre, oh, perro. Man. This break brought to you by the <laughs> laser. <laughs> show, show chef, show chef, show chef. She's about look, to look, fucking. Look. Bro, put the Laser Latino oh, image on chef, bro. Not on uh, me. Look, no, look, no, look. no, no, no. <laughs> No, cierto, don't do it. Canceled. Wrong. We're going to take a break. We're going to bring up Elias Gallegos, the the founder of Alianza Eastlake, founder of the Alianza Foundation. He's a big dog. One hey. of the big dogs in Chula Vista. And take he a break. Up early. We need, like need, need, we need a new city plays too, so oh, wow, you don't want to nice. get caught off guard with that shit. <laughs> bro, bro. Damn, perro. <laughs> Sometimes five minutes is enough. Sometimes five minutes is not enough to come back from break, but here we are. Young lady, only bring me three punk ales beers, as I will not be drinking any virgin peasantry today. Mmm, let's huh? go. What is this? Music? Selections. Ladies and gentlemen, we're back. We're back with Elias Gallegos, el profesor, el mero mero, and the boss, el jefe. Ooh, Elias, guy, thank you, young lady. Oh shit! Yay. Oh, down goes the egg. We're good. We're good. We can leave the egg there. Ooh. Ladies and gentlemen, we are with Elias Gallegos, the boss man, Alianza Jiu Jitsu, based out of East Lake. So Get much it. to talk about. So much to say. First off, thank you for coming back. For all of you who want to hear exactly what's up with fucking Elias Gallegos. You're going to have to play a little back to the future and go back about 125 episodes. As a matter of fact, I'm going to put that link up so you can hear it. You yeah. dropped a lot of a lot of gems there, bro. Yeah. A lot a lot a lot of information, a lot of a lot of knowledge dropped in that episode. Today we're just going to do a recap cuz we have video, you have a face made for fucking TV, unlike most of us up here, chef, respectfully you do. You Aww, do, not me. You. Nosotros no. Pero estamos aquí. Like, uh, Tell me a little going? bit about yourself, Elias. Of course. Yeah, born and raised in San Diego, but first First, I want to I want to honor you. I remember the first time we started, the first time we did I did the podcast. We we're in the basement of Three What's Punks. Up, perro? Little, yeah. tiny, little tiny room, little guys. And I want to honor you and the foundation, everything that you guys have done. You guys have grown tremendously in what you guys are doing. And first, I just want to honor you in that on your um, on your growth and everything that you've been doing for the community. So. I appreciate it. Thank you very much, man. And, and 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 you know what? In a way, it's a reflection of the things that you've kind of set forth for. A lot of people in Chula Vista. Yeah. You've been in this game for a minute. For a little you're, bit. you're not new. No. BJ Chisbera, do me a favor. Get down from your high perch and can you fix the microphone for Professor Elias and bring it right up in his mouth like he's about to eat a Lolita's burrito, bro. I want, <laughs> I want that shit right up in there like he's going to eat a Lolita's yeah, you, burrito. You got to get up nice and close. I, I eat him burritos from the side, though, bro. Oh, hey. Hey. Well, then well, it's okay. Well, well, Wait, like this? I talked to him from the <laughs> side, too, man. You know, like just for but today, just I like need this. you to eat that burrito from you Detroit, gotta, straight from the back to the front. Tell me a little bit about your jujitsu. Fuck jujitsu. Tell me a little bit about you. Yeah, of course. Born and raised in San Diego, grew up in Chula Vista, Bonita Vista High School. What's up? Time out. Ew. Raise your hand if you're a baron. Salmor del Rey, B -B. otro pinche baron por ahí, por ahí. B -B. Went to Bonita Vista for a little bit. Um, you know, real quick, just about my early life. Um, grew up not knowing who I was. And when you don't know who you are, you allow the world to tell you who you are. Oof. Yeah. Preach. Oof. And when you don't, like I said again, when you don't know who you are, you allow the world to tell you who you are. And, and most of the times, the world is going to tell you something that you're not. They're going to tell you what they want you to be. Yeah. You know, 
and the world was telling me to be a knucklehead, to be a gangster, to be this and to be that. Long story short, in high school, did an armed robbery, went to jail. Time out, brother. Yeah. Time out. I don't know what the statute of limitations are. I don't want no, you no, over. No, we're good. We're good. Arre, okay, yeah, cool. no, we're good. We're good. Proceed with your felonious hey, story. We're good. Felonious story. Este cabrón. I'm all lawyered up, papa. We're good. Usted legal. My lawyer is Jesus. I'm good, papa. Eso. Oh. Ha ha ha. So did an armed robbery in jail uh, in high school. Went to jail. Did some time. Uh, went in. Came out even worse. Oof. Came out even Oof. worse. Is that a common tale? It is. It is. Uh, the first time, look, you know, your mom told you not to touch the stove. You touched mm. it more than once. With my tongue sometimes. Yeah, with your tongue, right? Yeah, fuck. Yeah. So it, it took a while for me to learn, as it does for most young men who don't know themselves, you know? Long story short, I found my way into being a bodyguard and kidnapper for some guys from across the border. <laughs> what? Time out. A bodyguard and kidnapper. Yeah. All right. Body we're going to continue with the story? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, we're Tengo good. All right. All right, we're Tengo good. Miedo. <laughs> Go ahead. Tengo miedo. Um, Go ahead. Bodyguard and kidnapper for some guys uh, that were from across the border, in and out from Mexico, Chula Vista, here and there. Um, and my goal was to become, uh, I wanted to be hitman. Mm. That's, what, that's what it was. That was for me in my mind, you know, I was what? so lost, so dealing with depression. Look at Chef. Look at Chef. Not knowing what is going on. I wanted to be a fucking I fireman when I was little. But a lot of like the Lil Wayne version of Quería fireman. Ser <laughs> <laughs> but 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 let me let me back up and, and explain why I wanted to be that. I had so much anger. I had so much hurt from childhood trauma. My uncle, I had an uncle who molested me. Uh, and I only came out with this story about three years ago. I was only I was only able to share. Roughly three years ago. Mm. It was like a live on fucking Instagram yeah, or some yeah, shit, bro. Yeah, and you yeah. just you just uttered it out, I remember. Yeah, Wait, what? Yeah, 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 yeah. in serio. So, like, I remember scrolling. Yeah. And then I saw Profe on there. I saw Elias Gallego. Like, what's, what's Profe got to say? Pop. And then he got into it. Yeah. And I saw that. I was like, oh, and, shit. And this is why. This is why. Because I finally realized a lot of people that are dealing with what I was dealing with. Severe depression. Addicted to cocaine for 20 years. Um, again, not knowing who I was. Trying to find who I was. Yeah. Um, I just, I had turned into a monster. Mm. You know, and I didn't care anymore. And. We I mean, were, you didn't care about yourself. I, we were talking. I didn't, here, here, you know what I didn't care about? Myself? I didn't know how to love myself. Yeah. I could love other people, but I, I never knew how to. I, you know, and you know when I just started living myself? This past year. Oof. Mm. Just this past year, I learned how to love myself. Really? Yeah. What does that feel like? Yeah. It, it, feels, it feels amazing. You know why? Because now I know how to love people even more. All the stuff that I do. For people in the community, for my family members, all the stuff that I do, I did it in the beginning out of just not knowing, mm. not knowing myself. I just knew I had to do something. Yeah. So I have a tattoo on my on my. I have a tattoo. I'll take this. Just one. one. You know, no, you I only a, you, uh, you're a man with one tattoo. I got one apparently, big, I got one, so big, calm I one big tattoo. One <laughs> big tattoo. Right, and it says hope. Yeah. And the reason I got that tattoo. I bet you can't point on it. I bet you can't find it. <laughs> it's right there. It's right there. <laughs> so um, the reason I have that tattoo, hope, is because there was a point in my life where every day I was doing drugs. Every day I thought about killing myself. And uh, I remember getting that tattoo so that I would, when I would wake up in the morning, the first thing I would see in the mirror was hope. Yeah. And, and really, honestly, for people who are dealing with depression, who go through severe depression, it doesn't matter what people say. I love you. You're going to have a great day. Man, yes. It, that doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. You are. I could be in a sea of a million people and feel so lonely. Yes. Right. And so the reason I tell my story is because the first time I came out with my story, I had professional MMA fighters, like world champion MMA fighters. Dean Lister, everybody. Dean Lister, right? Black belts, black belts, yeah. champion, all these guys from all walks of life. That I didn't even know followed me. And they're like, hey, bro, thank you for sharing. I'm going through the same thing. Mm. And immediately God just spoke to my heart and said, hey, man, you have a platform. I didn't give you jujitsu to teach people how to fight. I gave you jujitsu for health, hope, and healing. So that's the motto of my, I have a nonprofit. The wow. motto is health, hope, and healing through the martial arts. Um, so, yeah, long story short, you asked me, how, you tell me a little bit about yourself. I grew up a knucklehead, and I was a man who... You know, I didn't know, I, I, I thought I was, I tried to be somebody early on. I tried to be somebody early on. Then I realized I was nobody. And now I'm realizing what God can do with a nobody. And so that's I don't think you were never nobody. I think you're, you were just in a place where you weren't 
who you were going to be today. Right. Sure, and I just sure. want to, I, I think words matter. Yeah. So don't ever call yourself a nobody. Yeah. Not never, ever. Yeah. Promise me that. Yeah, no, for sure. For don't, sure. Don't call but, yourself a nobody it, because it, I think so often when we're in those places, we, we talk about ourselves in such a way that, um, uh, that is, and I say that as somebody who has my whole life dealt with uh, clinical depression right. since I was 19 years old. Um, it is something that I struggled with. It is something that I continue to struggle with. And that really has so much to do, in my opinion, with how you talk, yeah. with the words that you say. And, and I sure. always say that sometimes like to people and people are like, what do you mean? And I'm like, words matter. You are not nobody. You are, you are somebody. You were just in the wrong place. You were right in the yeah. wrong place of mind. And to your point, so many things led, led you to where you are. But, yeah. but also all of that. All of that trauma, all of that. Look at look at what you've done with it, and I think that's what's just. Thank you for that. Holy sh! I mean, just in like, Here's the thing. like how many, how Here's many the minutes thing. was that? Like? No, no, real talk, Shit. real talk. That was powerful. Professor Elias, yeah, comes with a shit ton of baggage. I realized this the last time we spoke. Mm. The last time I had him on the podcast in the dungeon at the brewery. Yeah. I really got to know the profe on a different level. Yeah. yeah. You know, I was like, oh shit. To the point where I asked him after the fact, he's like, hey man, you want me to put this shit? I was like, no, bro, it's all good. Yeah. It's all good. Put it out. Put it out. This is my story. And I'm like, all right. So we yeah. put it all out. And yeah. you know, he's an intimidating motherfucker. You look at him, you're like, oh shit. Yeah, it says hope on his ear. Yeah, you know, he's got heart, color, yeah, yeah, heart. he's got hearts on there, but <laughs> This is a fucking deadly guy. You know, this this guy. Uh, can I can I I'm even more deadly on the dance floor. It's true. Ya llegó. Ya llegó. Ya llegó Sergio Bailador. <laughs> Elias, Elias, <laughs> Elias Bailador. <laughs> Which is almost more intimidating. I thought it was important. <laughs> I thought it was important right now to bring you back on. Yeah. Why? Because not, not only of all the accolades that you've accomplished sure. since those downs that you've had that you've experienced. You do a lot for the community, bro. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, and I want to get to that, but I want to keep hearing your story sure. for people who haven't heard it. Yeah, for it's sure. It's a fucking crazy yeah. gnarly, bro. You were like on the fast track to become a sicario. Yeah, you were pretty much already a sicario, yeah. and you said, you know what, I'm not about this life. Right. right. Yeah. I want. I want to turn my life around. And let me, I let me tell you how. So, I I remember specifically the day I go to my mom and dad's house. Me and my father got into an argument. My dad's a pastor, and um. And I, I feel, I, I don't even like telling this story, but I'm going to share it for a reason. Um, me and my dad got into an argument. Now, my dad is half my size. He's as dark as this thing right here. If you saw him, you'd never know that's my dad, right? If my dad walked in the door right now and said, Mio, come here, I would jump and run to that's my what, dad. That's what's I, up. I would yeah. jump and run to my dad. Yeah. You know? So at this time, I go to my house. I got into an argument with my dad, and I picked my dad up, and I threw him on the couch. And I was going to get ready to, to punch him, to like beat my dad up. My dad says, in the name of Jesus, right? Puts his hand out, and I flew across the room. Bro, I'm 250 pounds, right? and I flew across the room. When I say fly across the room, from here to the bar, that's where I flew. In one motion, right? I fell on my knees, and my dad walks over and says, Mijo, you need to make a decision. What are you going to do? What are you, if you go this route that you continue, you're going to... And look, I have friends that I've never... I have friends that were in that life... That I, some of them I've never heard from again because they, they got picked up. Some of them are in jail for the rest of their life. Some of them are over there. They can't come across the border anymore. You know, and my father told me, my father says, you're going to make a decision today, Papa. And the decision that you make today is going to determine the rest of your life. You're going to either continue to go this route or you're going to have to serve, start serving God again, right? And, and you want to you know, hear something funny? Uh, not funny, but scary. Is I heard a voice. Mm. I heard a voice in my in my like. You hear my voice? I heard a voice from here saying, "Beautiful voice, by the way." Go ahead. Thank you. I, I heard this voice, but this other voice was not beautiful. Right? This other voice says, "Tell my tell your dad you want to wait till Sunday." It was, this was a Wednesday. Tell your dad wait till Sunday, and I'm gonna give you everything you want from now until Sunday. A voice told me that in my ear. I heard the voice. Say, I'll give you any girl. All the money you want, but tell your dad you'll go back to church on Sunday. And I'm listening to this voice, looking at my dad. My dad starts praying for me, and immediately I recognized that that voice was not a good voice. Mm -hmm. And I rededicated my life to God that day. I wish I could say, man, it's been great since then. I've had ups and downs. 
I was still dealing with depression for the longest time. But you were kidnapping motherfuckers. No, I wasn't kidnapping. Well, you know what? I kidnapped my girlfriend. But, you know, that's how I got my girlfriend. But that's what I got my girlfriend. Pero son cosas del amor. Saber perder, saber ganar. So, so yeah, I wasn't kidnapping people anymore. Damn fool, you're the last motherfucker to kidnap a girl, too, for real. I don't think that, does that still exist? Sí. Aquí en los ranchos. En los ranchos, all right. So, uh, but, you know, I was still dealing with depression. I was yeah. still dealing with addiction. I was still... Depression doesn't go away just no, because you will hope it, it to go it, away. It doesn't. Right? It doesn't. So when I started dealing with my childhood trauma, then I realized... So I went to this... I went to this... I'm not going to say the name because I don't agree with what happened there. I went to this place. It was like a, an emotional intelligence place. Okay? they with emotional intelligence. So you can't really raise your IQ any, any, by, by more than a couple of points. But your emotional intelligence, you can raise by 50% if, mm. if you study it, if you work yes. on it, right? So I went to this place on emotional intelligence, and all of a sudden, that childhood trauma being molested by my Theo, which I had put yeah. down in a little box. You know where the box was right here in the back? I know where the box I could feel it in my body. Right? It got re- That box got removed during this during a session, like a therapy session. And um, all of a sudden, all these emotions from years... Of years of abuse, years of abuse. Now, look, here's what happened. Years of repression. Everything like repressed starts. Feelings. Everything starts connecting. Then I start realizing. Wait a minute. I was doing this because of this because I felt, oh my god, right. And then now I have to deal with this trauma yeah. of being molested. There was a point where, man, I thought I was gay. I was doing this stuff, right? All these things when you're a kid, when you're a kid, and you're like, hey, why does this? All these buttons that are being pushed that you're like, man, that should never happen to a six year old, you know? Mm. Um. Once I started deal, realizing and how to deal with that stuff and going through therapy, uh, I, then I realized, man, I never loved myself. I used to tell people thought like, oh, Elias is so conceited or he, he loves himself so much. He's a great party. He loves people. People mistake. They mistake the fact that because I love so much and I give so much out of, of my own that, man, he must love himself because he gives so much. Yeah. That thing could be further from the truth. Sometimes. You were just masking the hurt, bro. Oh, you were bro, just masking that, things that were there. That's, that's all I was doing. Yeah. That's all I was doing, you know? So now that I'm in a good place, I know how to love myself. I know how to love, and because I know how to love myself, because I know who I am, I know whose I am, um, I could do so much more for the community. Mm. I, could do so, I, I could do what I was called to do. Which yeah. started was, with jujitsu, with perro. Jiu-jitsu, yeah, mm-hmm. with jujitsu. So, Jiu-Jitsu was very helpful during my kidnapping and bodyguarding days. Inga su madre, bro. You say that with a grin that's creepy, bro. <laughs> tengo miedo. <laughs> look, 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 no me tengas me, miedo porque soy de Sinaloa. <laughs> <laughs> no, wey, yo soy la de Sinaloa. Let me tell you something. Let me t- and here's where my heart, my heart, it, it, I'm perfectly fine. I never did something to somebody that didn't deserve it. Calma de pinche Tony Montana. Look at Look at it. Look at it. Look at it. Look at it. All I want is what's going to do to me, man. Look at it. Get a close-up on this. You're right. I never did something that didn't have it fucking coming to him. <laughs> <laughs> you nasty man. No, but what I mean is I never did something to a civilian. So, mm-hmm. you know, so I can't, you know, the guy, uh, if I had to go talk to somebody. Take it easy, bro. <laughs> Don't say too much. You <laughs> if I had to go talk to somebody, it was because they needed a talking to. Mm-hmm. Other than that, we were <laughs> <good>. <laughs> That just got good, fellas. <laughs> that just got good, fellas, real quick. Clemenza, <laughs> we need you to go talk to somebody. <laughs> I'm going to go talk to somebody. <laughs> so... <laughs> This is, sorry. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to my phone. My dad's gonna bing. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just became. I'm just. I'm a leader at my church now, so they're gonna. I'm probably. Gonna, I'm gonna have a talking to. You're fine, bro. No, no, I think. Saying, I, I think them. this is also part of that. Part of part of that reaching out, right? I mean, I talked course, about it a little yeah. bit earlier. Sometimes when you're vulnerable and you share these things, people think that they are, they live in silos, right? Like, and you know this very well, like sometimes you think that like nobody is like you, that you are the only one and you you feel like you're so alone. And so to sometimes hear, oh shit, I, wait, I'm redeemable. Like I, I can come back from this. Like I, I've done horrible things. Yes. But like I can do more. Yeah. That is powerful. Yeah. Sure. So what you're sharing is super important. And I mean, is it, is it, is it, is it part of the gospel? Is it part of, no, it's part of real life lived experience sure. that allows and opens up the door for more people to join you, friend. Yeah. And that's the way you have to think about it. Yeah. It's not about, oh, you know, you shouldn't be sharing. Al contrario, yeah. you should be sharing it because. Just because you're at that point doesn't mean there's no way out. Exactly. Right. Sure. Okay. You, sure, give pe- yeah. you give people exactly what you have tattooed on your face, my yeah. friend. Yeah. You ain't you the only motherfucker hope. who hit rock bottom. Yeah. yeah there's no, a lo- no, there's, there's yeah. a whole gang of you, bro. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I feel like the, a majority of those people that you've brought, 
They practice jujitsu with Alianza yeah. East. Like, oh, <laughs> let me, let me <laughs> tell you something. Let, thug, let me perro. tell you something. Let me tell you something. I'm ready. Ever since I came out and was open about what I was dealing with, you're right. People will, will gravitate gravitate towards me because they realize at one point they thought, oh, he on the outside, you know, oh, Pepper Brooks from Instagram or whatever, all these followers, everybody that, that loved this guy, they thought he had it together. Then they realized I didn't. But they realized when I came out and I was open with it, it was like an avenue for these guys to be like, yo, man, that's happening to me too. I yeah. thought, look, the worst Agreed. thing that the enemy can do to you is make you feel like you're alone. Right. When you're you the, little, the, the little deer by himself. Isolate the, you. Yeah, isolate isolate you. you. And what happens when you get into depression, we love to isolate ourselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, so now I had all these guys, 20, 30 guys that were isolating themselves. And I came out and told my story for the very first time. And like I said, I had this, I was inundated with these high profile people that were like, hey, man, I never knew that. That happened to me too. And I never wanted to share. Thank you. And from that moment, I knew that that was going to be part of my calling. You fucked around and became the voice of that community, Hefe. Yeah, for sure. You know for what sure. I mean? And yeah. that's what people look for. People yeah. look for somebody who are going through the same struggles, yeah. the same, any emotion. Yeah. They look for somebody who they can connect with and then they do and then they find somebody like you and they're like, yeah. that's my guy. Yeah. That's yeah. what I want to go with. And you know what's funny? It, uh, you know what's funny is through my nonprofit, I work extensively with like SDPD, National SDPD, Chula Vista PD. And uh, I'm going to tell you guys a story that's like, you want to talk about redemption. So I got... Uh, I got arrested for an attempted murder, right? Chinga and, um, madre, and, and I, they took me to the Logan Heights SDPD um, station right station. there. That's where I got I got booked in. And, uh, and I'll never forget going there. And I was with my co-defendant. We were in there. And then uh, three years later, three years later, I do, a, I, I do a speaking for the SDPD. And they had me, they gave me the address. It's in Logan. Oh, fuck. They take me in through the back door. And I'm walking around and I turn the corner and I look and there's the cell that I was, that they had held me in for attempted murder. How time changes, bro. Right? And, wow. I was able, and I was able to, to like take in that moment and just be so thankful that God gave me another chance and, and, and come full circle. And I even shared that story, right? That, that night I spoke to a bunch of at-risk youth and a bunch of SDP, and a bunch of SDPD officers there. And they were like, wow, they, you know, it, to me, it was just amazing on what God can do for you, you know, when you allow him to, you know, and, but I'm, that moment was so surreal when I turned the corner and I was like, man, I think I've been here. And my mind was like, I think I've been here before. <laughs> Cause like you go in the other way, when you get arrested, you come in the back way. When, yeah, you, yeah. when you get invited to talk, you go through the front, you know, and when we moved around, I turned the corner, I saw the cell right there. And I was just like, wow, you know, a couple of years ago, I was in that cell. I was on the other side of this thing, you know? And so that's one of the reasons I get back as well. Like if I could say one kid. I, one of the programs I have is I work with at-risk youth, you know, mostly. And I look for kids. I look for men, males that don't have a dad. That's my that's my heart, mm. you know. All the statistics are out there. When a, when a young man doesn't have a dad, they're going to be more prone to go to jail. They're going to be more prone mm. not to go to college, not to get a job. Yes. You know what I mean? That's just the stats on that. So that's my heart. God has given me the Shit, heart. Shit, I can't die then, fool. Yeah. Fuck, I got three little boys. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, no. We've been oh. trying to tell you more, well, though. Yeah. You know, and so that's my heart. You know, that's yeah. my heart is, is is at risk youth. You know, that's what one of the programs I have for my at my nonprofit. You know? Tell us a little bit about that nonprofit. Did yeah. it did it come out from Alianza Jiu Jitsu? No, how did so, all that happen? So check this out. So I had a student. How the fuck did you get so good, dog? Like so fast? Like how did you turn the leaf? That's no. crazy. Well, so it's not. You're telling a crazy story yeah, yeah. that a lot of people will find very yeah. unbelievable, and it's yeah. like wow. So I used to look. San Diego is a military town, mm. right? A lot of my students are just military guys, law enforcement guys. And I'll never forget one time I had a student who I hadn't seen in like two, three years. He just disappeared. And uh, I don't know where he went. Turns out he went over to the Middle East, right? Shows up to my academy one day. Uh, there's a U-Haul outside my academy, right? And I was like, what the fuck? Like, who's, who's out there, whatever? Right? And then like a, and after an hour later, the guy gets down and he comes into, into the, into the uh, academy. Drunk, high. And I was like, yo, bro. Metiche Monday. Yeah, yeah. Metiche Monday. Very Metiche Monday. Very Metiche Monday. <laughs> and I'm like, bro, what, what, what like, what, what, Guess where you been at? Where were you hanging like, out with Stephen yeah, BJ? Where, What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> Those guys are bad influencers. And he goes, and he goes, no, I, you know, I, I was over in the uh, Middle East. Yeah. I don't want to say where. And I was like, well, all right. I go, and, and at this point, I hadn't, I didn't know anybody who had gone over, and you hear about the stories, right? I didn't know anything about PTSD. I didn't know anything about that. But my friend who was my student had obviously changed. Yeah. Something in the way he looked, his eyes, mm. 
his mm -hmm. face, the yeah. demeanor, todo el pelo, bro. His, his drinking, he was going to get divorced. And I was like, okay, man, just uh, just come back and start training again. Like, just I, I don't know what to say, you know? So that week, I get on my Facebook and I go, hey, you know, I start studying, like, man, what's a, that's when I started finding about PTSD, all this stuff. So that week, I made a little Facebook post, hey, if anybody uh, is a combat veteran, and you're not feeling too good because I don't want to say you're not feeling too good. Come on down. I'm gonna give you six months for free. I'm gonna let you train yes, for six months. I didn't have my I didn't have my nonprofit yet, right? You're you're big time about that, bro. Yeah, yeah. you're big time yeah. about just popping up and saying, hey, for yeah. the next month, six two thousand dollars. Yeah, and, and two thousand dollar lifetime membership, yeah, bro. Yeah. What? I was getting my hair cut and I just looked on my phone and it, Professor Elias said, I said, being sold. Yeah. I signed up for that shit right then and there. <laughs> so, so I just, wow. I said that, I said that because I understand the importance. So look, what I do at my nonprofit or what I do at my gym is I also have men's life groups, right? We don't call them Bible studies because you can come, you don't have to believe in God. It's just, a, if I get five dudes and we go into the back and we go eat breakfast together and we talk, someone's going to have a problem with their relationship. Someone's going to have a financial problem. Someone's going to have a problem with Everybody. their job. Yeah. They're either coming in, going out. Or about to get into one of those things, right? Absolutely. So I have, in all my academies, I have life groups, right? So we started doing life groups for guys and just showing up and just talking about life, right? Yeah. And there's a there's something to be said when you're dealing with an issue, you know, let's say you don't go to church. Let's say you don't have a best friend. Let's say you don't have no output, mm. but you're getting input all the time from your family, yeah. from your workers. What's going to happen if you don't have an output, that's going to kill you. Yeah. And a lot of times men's, one of the greatest things I ever heard somebody say when they got promoted, when I gave him his blue book, he said, if I didn't have jujitsu, I'd be at the bar right now drinking. Mm. Because jujitsu, I'm not an alcoholic. Anymore. Let me take the moment to say there's nothing wrong with that <laughs> here at Three Point Gales <laughs> and at the Alwood. <laughs> we highly, we highly support <laughs> you know go and train and then have a beer. But let's not <laughs> todo <laughs> con <laughs> medida. <laughs> todo <laughs> con <laughs> IG. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, oh, Professor yeah. Hadley. Shit, <laughs> you're a piece of shit, casa. <laughs> so, so. Back to the store with the guy, you know. Try so to make like, me feel bad oh, real quick right there. But I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> so I was trying to, you know, formulate what can I do to help these people? And then I thought to myself, we live in the military community. How can I get back? So I yeah. made that little post, right? Then I started doing things for at-risk youth. And then I started, I do a lot of public speaking. I, I go and speak all over the place. I started speaking at schools and uh, elementary schools, high schools, and just kind of just talking about the power of, Moving, you're a superstar in that world, bro. You get down. I'm just moving, you know. Yes. Like if, if if you can move, if you can walk, you're gonna. Here's the most important. People think, oh, what's the most important thing in life? Oh, you know, I want to make this amount of money. No, if you don't have your health, you can't spend your money. Mm. If you Preach. don't have your health, if you don't have your health, you can't spend time with your kids. If you, don't have your health, you can't do nothing. Nada. Right. And so understanding that through my depression, when I would train, even though I hated training, mm. like, bro, there were sometimes I wanted to firebomb the gym because I hated it so much. But I knew that That's when I was there. That's aggressive, but okay, head. go with it. Go ahead. <laughs> 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 sometimes, <laughs> sometimes I really wanted a Molotov, this motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> not, not that I know anything about that. But I didn't. Not that I know anything about that. Not that I know anything about that. But, you know, um, I, knew, good, good, I, good, I knew good, that. Good way of bringing it back. Yeah. Right? No, I not knew, that I know nothing. I, son rumores. Allegedly, son rumores. Allegedly. Right? Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> I knew that. I knew that when you work out, whatever problem you have in life, Whatever you're dealing with, your mm. boyfriend, your girlfriend, money, whatever. When you work out and someone's trying to choke you, you don't have time to think about mm -mm, your problems. That's secondary, bro. So an hour, for an hour, you're okay. You leave your problem outside. Your problem's going to be waiting for you. But for an hour, and I thought to myself, look, if these guys can't pay for it, I'm going to give it to them. Because mm. mm. I know the power of it. So I was doing this for like five or six years. I've had the academy for eleven years. Wow. Hey, wow. Don't shortchange yourself, big yeah, boss. Yeah, How many academies? Yeah. How many fucking classes under your academy do you have? I, I have uh, three schools underneath me. Yeah. Wow. Three schools, three schools. Biggest three academy in San Diego or what? I have the third biggest academy in San Diego. Yeah. But look, I always tell. Here's my thing. I'm, <laughs> I'm not Brazilian and I'm, no, and I'm not a world champion. And I have the third biggest. Well, I think it's the third biggest academy in San Diego. Wow. So, Take it easy. Pick up your yeah, dick. Wait. You're just a paisa, dog. <laughs> you're, just, you're just a paisa, bro. <laughs> Getting it done. Move. Alliance Jiu-Jitsu. Alliance. 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 Alliance Jiu-Jitsu. Yeah. Gallegos Jiu-Jitsu. Yeah. Go and ahead, so, And bro. so one day this parent is like, hey, uh, professor, I want to talk to you. He goes, I want to give some money to your nonprofit. And I go, huh? Like in my mind, I thought a nonprofit was like, Growing up, I'm so I'm 46. I used to grow up watching uh, the telethon, uh, Jerry's. Uh, Jerry Lewis. Jerry, Jerry Lewis, Lewis, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, the MS telethon. So he goes, hey, I want to give some money to your nonprofit. 
And I was like, I don't have MS. What do you mean? Like, I don't. What? Like, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, that was it. That was it. Yeah, I, like, I don't have MS. I don't have MS. You know? Look at me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I made it and, yeah. I'm a monster on the dance floor. <laughs> 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 You're probably like full circle, man. It's full circle. BJ got canceled. <laughs> it's called a callback, people. It's comedy. <laughs> and so he goes, What do you mean you don't have a nonprofit? He goes, All the stuff that you do, because when people come in, I give them all their equipment. You know, so mm -hmm. by that time, if you're a combat veteran with PTSD, I give you a life to them. You come and train for free for the rest of your life. Wow. And your kids. And I give you all your equipment, everything. So he goes, Who pays for that? And I go, I I go, I do. I, I just pay for everybody myself. Like we eat it. And then I cover everybody's like I eat it he goes you don't have a non-profit and I go no he goes all this time all these years you've been helping people giving things away that's your own money and I go yeah I go what's a non-profit and he goes come here I'm gonna help you get a non-profit mm. oh, wow. hey can you tell me because we have one now for yeah. a little bit over a year and yeah. I still don't know what the fuck it means yeah <laughs> and so we 501c3 non-profit yeah. Emo Brown Foundation IRS you have the right to say IRS approved IRS approved 501c3 can non I get a thumbs up on that IRS approved Justin all right, yeah, yeah, yeah IRS yeah, yeah. approved. All right, when cool. You, when you hashtag it, I always hashtag IRS approved. Yeah. Uh, and that's you know one thing on the side that that's a city business, the nonprofit. You might say a side, but the camera's still going, so yeah. careful, watch out. <laughs> that's a city business, bro. Hey, when when I first got my nonprofit, I would get calls to people ask me, "Hey, can we use your pro nonprofit name para este for this and that? Yeah. We'll give you thirty bucks." Like, yeah, I don't think so, bro. Mm -hmm. Nah. Anyways, but as soon as I hit you with fifty, yeah, yeah, I'm attack, right? no, right. Hey, take it easy. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Hold on. I, went, I went to a nonprofit thing in uh, Escondido. I got invited to it. Bro, I felt so out of place, man. I showed up. It was nothing but like six foot five tall white people, mm. right? And their wives. And then me, I showed up. And like security came up to me and asked me what I was doing there. And I was like, I'm, I got invited. They're like, sir, 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 the elotes are in the back. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Los elotes, over there, over there. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that, that was trippy. Like, I, I tend to stay away from those types of gatherings, those that type of networking. Why? Because uh, just it's not what I thought it would be. As far as mm. it's a lot of maneuvering, it's a lot of hey, this look at me, that. look yeah, at us, yeah, look at look, what can you do for me? And I don't want that. I want to, I, I want to care about the people in my mission. Mm. So my mission field is the South Bay. My mission field is Chula Vista National City. That's my mission field. You know, sounds I, like someone else I know. I know who I want to go. I know who I'm going after. You know, I don't need to be anywhere else but there for now. Yeah, and I don't need to be selling the name of my nonprofit or or them using my five one two three. So they can make money, and yeah. like, I don't. That's what it is, you know. Because you could, for I just recently found out a while ago that through my nonprofit, I can have beer gardens anywhere I want. Because through my nonprofit, that's yeah. when we get called the most. Yeah, yeah right. They call you up. <laughs> hey, for we that. have an event. Do you guys want to let us use your uh, nonprofit so we can sell beers? Like, yeah. how much you throw in our way, dog? Right, yeah. I'm in. Exactly. Right. So all this stuff, I was finding that stuff. So I, I stay away from that. I'm very small with my nonprofit. I have one uh, man. I can't even say his name, but he's a jujitsu black belt, mm. and. Uh, Hoist Gracie. No, no. All right, my he, bad. He's a jiu-jitsu black belt <laughs> in San Diego. And he, he has a... Nobody knows this about this jiu-jitsu black belt. jiu -jitsu black belt. And he has a gigantic foundation that's not under his name and everything like that. And they support my nonprofit. Good for wow. you, man. They Good for you. Non that's awesome. You know? Good for you. And so, uh, long story short, I, I guess on the nonprofit end, I made my... We did my nonprofit. We got my board. And we became official. You know, but for the longest time, I was just doing stuff out of my own money. Most of it is... My, you know how it is when you're a little smaller... A lot of the stuff we do is out on our own. You oh, know? yeah, so Every yeah, once yeah. in a while, you come in, you get a donor that's going to be here and there. They'll donate some turkeys like they do for me, stuff like that. But very It's a hustle. Very, it's a hustle. You're out there, you're, yeah. trying to, you're trying to, it's creating a whole new brand. Very rarely will you get somebody on the smaller ends that'll come in and cut you a check for 10 grand or something. Right. Like that. I've had it not happen before, but most of that, and, and the good thing about my nonprofit, I don't take no admin costs. 100% of the money that comes to my nonprofit, it goes right back into the to the programs as it pay, should I don't pay no, no not, admin nothing yep. nothing no admin I don't think people realize that yeah I don't think people realize that we we are out here doing things you know foundations yeah. most non-profits here at least here in, in the yeah. South Bay that I know of yeah there's no money coming back. Nah, nah, Everything nah. that comes in is to cover overhead of yeah. the projects, of the yeah. events, of the products we're procuring. And in some cases, it's like, fuck, we got to come out of pocket. Well, yeah. fuck it. Then yeah. we got to come out of pocket. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. yeah. It's a good for you. Yeah. So I'm, I'm good happy for you. there, you know. Um, and we've just been growing ever since. You know, I, I look, I use my jujitsu not to teach people how to. So. There's two types of jujitsu. You know this. You know what? This is what I love about you, bro. You know, you are jujitsu. Yeah. In, in, in San Diego, you know, like you are in the conversation of being jujitsu. Sure. You are the guy. Sure. Top sure. three, like you sure. said, you are the guy. Sure. But this whole conversation so far has been like, 
alluding to jujitsu, but more so how you use it to kind of better yourself. Yeah, it's my platform. Yes. I, this is how I look at it. God gave me a platform, and I'm not going to be selfish with that platform. I'm going to use it to help and better help other people get better. You know, it's so, so the jujitsu. It's, it's been a thought, Chef. <laughs> Chef, it's true. I'm I, listening. Like Listen, I've been I'm doing, a believer. I've been in his academy. Yeah. You know, I have children who are in his academy. Oh. I've seen my kids transform from being introvert, and this is. Obviously, jujitsu is and in every respeto is like it, it helps people in a different way. Yeah, for sure. You know, yeah. my kids, you know, they're introverts. You yeah. know, and I don't know if because of they are they are a product of the shutdown of the COVID and everything and just kind of like everything being indoors, but they are very much introverted socially. My biggest aspiration is I just need these kids to be able to be put in a situation where they can adapt and and, and overcome and do their thing, like find right. their lane. And without jujitsu. And it sounds cheesy. I found Jesus. I did this. Yeah. I, I hear a lot of people say that shit. And I was like, whatever. But when my kids like discovered jujitsu, it flipped the switch on them. You know, it flipped the switch on them. Now they're more like they, they're more involved with uh, their peers. Mm. They have like, uh, you know, they, they have connections. They yeah. build friendships. They've built their confidence. Yeah. That's so awesome. my kids are no longer like the shy guys in the corner, which is my biggest fear, you know? Yeah. Because as you know, I'm not that shy. I don't give a fuck. I'll talk yeah. to you. I'll reach out to you. I'll walk to you. I'll, I'll want to learn about you. My kids aren't that way, but jujitsu kind of like, <laughs> yeah. it flipped the switch to them for that. In addition to, if they see a situation where somebody else needs assistance, I 100% believe they'll be there. Yeah. Because jujitsu teaches you that. When, awesome. Like when, when you have dramas, when you have life issues in your head, and you're going to jujitsu. You got to put that on timeout because if you bring that with you, you could fuck around and die. Yeah, mm -hmm. you're trying to survive practicing jujitsu. Somebody's trying to choke you. Somebody's trying to put you to sleep. Somebody's trying to hurt you. Like that whole time, there's like, oh, I got this bill. Oh my god, I don't feel good because of this. Oh my god, it's like there's just, eh. you better come in with an empty slate. You know, you better be fear, uh, free and clear of all things because jujitsu will teach you a hard lesson and it'll humble, it'll humble you, but it'll also teach you like I just need to focus on surviving. You know, when you go on an air, you're on an airplane and it says. Don't give your face mask to your child. Take right. care of yourself first right. yes. before you take care of somebody else. Jiu-Jitsu forces you to do that. I can't help BJ if I'm not helping myself first. Right. You know? Right, right, and right. for jujitsu, that is what I'm very yeah. appreciative of, yeah. bro. Yeah. yeah, it's really good about that. Um, so just going back to the nonprofit, uh, if I could share something we're doing this Thursday, is that okay? To do your of thing, course. bro. So, this is so, your platform. So one of the things that we do is I understand that during the holidays, like we were saying, many of us, some of us have families, but we don't talk to our family. Yes. Some of us just don't have families. So a lot of military guys are here without their family. Yes. So what I'm doing this Thursday for anybody in the community that is, in, you know, like this in the combat sports, milita um, military law enforcement guys, anybody that trains jiu-jitsu or Muay Thai, if you don't have a family, I'm doing a big, uh, I have catered, one of my sponsors, Mikey's Meals. El vato, hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, uh, um, um, one of my many sponsors. <laughs> hey. One of my sponsors, Mikey's Meals. They do the, pre, the the meal preps, right? Mikey meal preps. Mikey's meals, yeah. He's gonna. I, I, I. Uh, so like, I always like to keep money inside my family. Yeah. You know what I mean, so I, I paid for a full crating. We're gonna have two full turkeys, two full hams. He's making tamales, everything, right? For those guys, those people in my community. Um, that don't have families. Yeah. You know, we're going to have a big uh, training session from 10 to 12, and then people are going to show up, and then we're going to just break bread together. You nice. Know? Where and is this at? It's going to be at my gym, 821 Coon Drive, in okay. uh, Chula Vista apartment. East Lake. Yeah. K-U-H-N yeah, Drive? Yes, K-U-H-N. Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah, bro. You yeah, so we're doing that, and then we do a big, I do a big toy drive. Last year, we were able to collect over 2,500 pieces of wow. toys. Wow, bro. 2,500 pieces of toys. So this year, I'm going to be, um, there's three nonprofits that I'm working with. And uh, for some reason, my, I love my students, man. All my students in the association, all my students in East Lake uh, are all on board with the vision that I have, you know? So like, this is how I tell my students. Like, oh, look, man, don't go to McDonald's or Starbucks once and go buy a $5 toy at Target or yeah. Walmart, show up and drop in. You know what I mean? Like, sometimes we forget. Man, I went to Cuba one year, you know? And uh, I went for Cuba on vacation. I went to Cuba on vacation. And I ended up, I had two days in, my vacation stopped. And it became just a realization of how how great we have it here. Oof. Oh, yeah. Sometimes, you know, I don't and know. And we overlook that sometimes. How bro. great we have it. How fortunate we are to times, live in the U.S., how, bro. Do I go to the refrigerator because I'm hungry? My refrigerator is packed. 
But I'm like, ah, there's Take no it easy, bro. Take it easy, bro. There's people that don't yeah, have a patent fridge. Take it easy, bro. Right, there's nothing there, right? There's like he's got the same there. thing we got in, in our refrigerator. In, in Cuba, <laughs> in Cuba, like there's no toilet paper in Cuba. Yeah. Like that's a thing. There's no toilet paper in Cuba, bro. There's there's no food in Cuba. Yes. I turned the corner with my two kids. We're staying in Havana. And uh, we're sitting like in, an, in in somebody's house, like in, a, in their Airbnb type of thing. And I turned, and I'll never forget this this vision that I saw. I saw these three kids with the biggest smiles on their faces. I mean, they must have been nine, bro. The biggest, ah, laughing, like laughing, right? And you know what? They're fucking kicking a soda can back and forth, you know. And I'm holding my youngest son's hand, and he and we just stop. And he's, the kids are just kicking and playing and having fun. And my son is just looking and I'm just looking and I'm over here. I got to get my son the newest place, this and that, right? And these kids are finding the pure, like pure enjoyment. It, it's not what they have, it's who they're with. Claro. You know? And uh, it but it's just, like Christmas, bro. When you bring your kids gifts for yeah. Christmas, they don't give a fuck what's in the box. They want to play with the box. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they want to hide themselves in the yeah, box. They yeah. want to push each other around in the box. That's yeah. a battle right there. Bro, yes. So it was just that was an eye opening, an eye opening experience for me. I'm just so I'm. I try to do so every day in the morning. One thing that one thing that I do is people always ask me like, "What's your day like? Like, what's your routine?" Because I work at the nonprofit. I do my nonprofit work. I do work at the church. I do work at the gym and I'm up by 4.30 sometimes in the morning and then I don't go to bed till like 1. Get one, it, bro. You know? And one thing I do every day is I do my affirmation walk, my gratitude walk. You know, I get to work, I'll walk about 45 minutes and I'll just talk to myself. Hey, you're going to have a great day. This is who you are. Don't forget. And I talk about the things that I'm thankful for. Right? Every day I walk around and you'd be surprised when you talk to yourself like you were saying. Words you talk matter. Talk to yourself. Words matter. You know, you're the best. You're a king. You're going to be the best it's version so, of yourself today. This is how, so. We're going to work out for 20 minutes today and we're not going to stop. You know, yes. with my tattoo right here, it's the mathematical equation for be greater than average. Right? So every time I'm working. God, what the pinchy Sigmund Freud of the Be is Pinchi, greater Pinchi than. Pinchi like, wow. Taking notes. Uh, yeah. B, B is time. greater than a burrito without <laughs> guacamole.com. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, may, I may steal that. Yeah. I'm like, I but, may but, but, steal but that. You know what? It's so good. You know what? Hey, yo, put your tattoo up so people can see that what, shit, what bro. Look at that. I don't know if we have the capabilities of fucking zooming in, but that's. Yeah. That's amazing. You're a savage, bro. So B is greater than average, you know? And so when I'm walking, I'm going to walk an extra 10 minutes. When I'm lifting, I'm going to do two more rounds. When you're having a burrito, nah, you're going to have that ass. Fuck it, bro. We, <laughs> and if you have beef, have a burrito, a burrito. another burrito. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, that's what I, that's, look, I feel like I got more, look, and I know you're going to say, oh, don't talk that, but listen, I'm trying to be realistic. I'm 46. Yeah. Right? Jovenazo. I, I feel like I have more past than I do future in front of me. All right. right? And, and that's just being real, you know? So, so 45 I'm, years yeah, instead yeah, of 46. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, know you know what I'm saying? And so I'm trying to do that and just, I'm trying to live the, be the best version of myself that I can be. Good. I don't, yes. I don't, I don't grade myself against anybody else. Here's what that's I tell right. my, Good. I tell my students this. I say, today you should be better than you were last week and next week you should be better than you are today. Yes. Go ahead. Right? That's it. That's it. That's all, right? One of the things I tell my students that I try to tell my people that when I go and do public engagement or public speaking is... People, I'm gonna ask, let me ask you, what's the most valuable commodity that you have? Marijuana. <laughs> My time. <laughs> okay. so, so, so everybody will say, most people will say Chef time. always got to keep it real. Right? <laughs> right? My so time. Most people will say time when we talk about commodity. We like, have very little time. What's the most important thing that you have is time, but it's not your time. And I'm going to tell you why. It's your energy. Mm. Because right now, mm. as, as a, like, if I'm your if I'm your student. If I'm laying in bed for nine months, yeah. that's no. not going to be in, mean as much as a month of that's having energetic, saying. like, vamos, but, but, pilas. Let me explain it like this. So I can... Teach a class with 30 students. They all get my hour. Yeah. But not everybody gets my time. Right? And so I, I know I know this. It's very important what I give my time to. Right? But it's even more important what I give my energy to. Because my energy, you only have a certain amount of energy. This right? is true. So whatever you give your energy. So I might give my energy to draining shit, to people that are not helping me up, uplift me. What am I giving to, to, to drama? What am I giving my energy to? Because you only have a little bit of Preach. energy. A certain amount of energy. Right? Time you have 24 hours, but the energy you don't, you know, and the older we get, the less energy we have. Agreed. You know, so for me, I always tell my students, it's so important to understand the value of not just your time, but the value of your energy. 
right? Who do you give your energy? Some people, I'm telling you right now, there don't you deserve your energy. Oof. Some I people was waiting don't. for that. Go ahead. They don't deserve your energy. Mm. Right? You know, some people don't. Some people deserve a little bit of your energy. We got to constantly yeah. keep trimming the fat. You have we to. We got to keep getting rid of to, things that don't matter you in our life. Have mar- here's the thing, that we, and here's another thing that people don't have. People don't have margin in their life, right? And what, what I mean by margin, if I have a plate, I'm not going to fill my plate up all the way over. Why? I need Speaking to have a little bit. Language. I have to have a little bit you of room. You need to have breathing room. Mm-hmm. I have a little bit of room for dessert, right? So just like in life, <laughs> yes. you can't fill up your plate of life. No. Why? What if an emergency happens? Oh, I don't got no room. You have to have margin. So look, the most important Fuck thing, everybody is what you're saying. Not, not everybody, <laughs> but mostly <laughs> everybody, right? <laughs> Fuck them all. But it's true. It's, it's no, true. Yeah. It's true. And I think one of the most powerful things, going back to one of the things that you said at the beginning, and I may be too high to remember because this motherfucker keeps smoking next me? to me. <laughs> this motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> but I think I think um, one of the really important things that you had kind of mentioned, uh, aside from you know your your energy and 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 all of this stuff, is is how incredibly important it is to. No, yeah, I've totally lost it. Fuck my life. Okay. It's important. No, there's a greater good than just us, man. We got to sure. make sure we surround ourselves with people that are gonna not only like keep us operating, but take us to the next level. Yeah. And yeah. if we don't surround ourselves with those kinds of people, man, it's all for shit. Yeah. It's all for nothing. And I can tell you firsthand, for me specifically, I've cut out so many people in my life that not only they're homies, yeah. but it's like, man, you're not contributing to me yeah. growing. Yeah. You're not contributing to anything positive in this relationship. I got to let you go. Yeah. You know, and yeah. it's like not like I'm a high and mighty. It's like, nah, for you, yeah. you don't work for me. Right. You know, you are a scrum, a, a square peg in a, and I'm a round hole. Yeah. That shit's not going to fit. So I got to get rid of you. Yeah. You know, and it might be temporary. It might be forever. But whatever the fuck it is, bro, I'm going to only hang around with people that I know are helping me grow in the bigger way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah bro. You have to. Yeah. You're doing an excellent job, especially after hearing the way you started. Bro. No mames, I don't think she malandrina la verga, bro. You were like all of the bad things in the world, yeah. bro. In world them to one, bro. Yeah. Picking up your dad, throwing him on you whenever fucking hit him. And then Jesus stopped you. Yeah. And then you said, fuck this. You're right. I need to go and take my le- my life to the next level. Yeah. You discovered jujitsu. Jujitsu says, you know what? I can provide this as a tool, as a free way to take you to the next level. You great, you procured your black belt. Which is no, it's no small feat. Yeah, no. That is a mm-hmm. difficult task to obtain. To get your black belt, you know, bro, I've been a white belt for three years. What's <laughs> up, perro? Three <laughs> fucking years. Uh, but the COVID was there. Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's uh, be yeah. real, all right? So yeah. one year. But one I mean, year. yeah. But it, it, it takes dedication. Sure. You know, that's the only way. To get to be a black belt. Yeah. It doesn't matter how fucking fast you are. It's still going to be as low as five years, like fucking BJ yeah. Penn. Yeah. Something like that is like very, it's very rare. You are there to put in the time. Yeah. You are there. You're dedicated. You've built your academy to one of the top three in the fucking yeah. San Diego County. You, you're a black belt. What degree? Three? No, I'm, I'm the I'm the highest ranking Latino in San Diego. Get it, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We got a new highest yeah, ranking. Yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> shit. Hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Oh man, the yeah. highest ranking Latino yeah. black belt yeah. from San Diego. Wait, yeah, yeah. Me, I'm a fourth degree. Where did his dick grow off? It, <laughs> it's over there. Yeah. Over there. Gus <laughs> is juggling it. Yeah. Gus <laughs> he's, he's got it at the bar. <laughs> that is awesome, bro. Yeah, Don't yeah. shortchange yeah. your yeah. route. Don't shortchange your journey because your journey started from the bottom. Yeah. yeah. The hey. rock bottom. Yeah. There's no greater low to start with you than you where you started and you took it to you because it's yeah. your experience. And your journey's not over yet. No, not at all. Because no. we have more questions. Yeah. Go ahead, BJ. So Hit got, me with the Discord question of the week. We got the Discord question of the week because it's only one this time, yeah, yeah. but uh, it comes from Maggie, and I think she's here somewhere, but um, she wants to know in jujitsu, yeah. what's one or two moves that everybody should know? Oof. Like Just normal people, if you're out there, like yeah, this is sure. something you should know. And, and so. Chef, you did a cool thing. You kind of like, you were taking it back, but you know what? You know what? Uh, I am a part of Chula Vista Jiu-Jitsu Club, yeah. which is a part of, you know, Alianza, yeah. Gallegos Jiu-Jitsu. Okay. These guys offer services to like women. And, well, that was my question. Why, yeah. are you, why are you taking it away? Well, I'm not, taking, I'm not yeah. taking it away because I didn't know it, but I'm amplifying what they yeah. do. Yeah. They offer this service, which for a while, it's like, you look at it, it's like, oh, that's weird. You know, like, but now more than ever, you're like, no, that's a fucking necessity. Yeah. yeah. So El Profesor and his academy, they offer these services. They offer like, you know, women's self-defense. Yeah. Women like jujitsu, women mm. white time, just MMA, whatever it is. To take care of yourself. That's awesome. Through my through my nonprofit, if yeah. you have a let's say you have a running group, if you're a woman in any type of group, 
my nonprofit will go to your business and do a free women's self-defense rape prevention seminar. You just have to contact mm-hmm. me. Here Believe my that, bro. Did you guys hear that? Believe that, wow. man. You don't need an Emo Brown social club to get that shit. Yeah. That's amazing. That, that, shit is just something, that shit is just something he offers. <laughs> That's amazing. I'm going to get in his ear a little later to see what the, oh, the Emo Brown social club card does procure because I have a feeling it'll get you something. Yeah, we'll I got you. Yeah, we'll, 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 so to answer the question, yeah. one of the most important things you need to learn how to do is stand up in base. For what does that mean? So that means if you fall down, how to get it properly, how to stand up properly. Gus, you want to do it right there? Gus. Yes. Come on, Go Gus. ahead, Gus. Let's Damn go, Gus. Perro. So, 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 Gus, so watch. Gus, wait, just, wait, wait, let's get a camera, camera on Gus. We're, we got to get on Gus real quick. We don't have no camera on Gus? All right, fuck Eric Gus. Is, then. Eric is like, <laughs> Gus, that's the guy. <laughs> Gus is wait, the guy. So, so, so talk Gus to me again. Out. What is it called? So, it's so called a- this is called standing up in base. So it's not even offense. Standing up in base? So mm. all this is, is that if you fall down, Go ahead. Okay. someone's chasing you, someone grabs you, domestic violence, someone pushes you. When you fall, most people will put their hand behind their back and you yeah. break your arm. Gus is going to just do a break fall while she's going to- Ladies and gentlemen, in. Gustavo, the best friend. Okay. He's the best be so fucking friend. Uh, uh, does it. Look uh, at him. Uh, eight. Can a black get belt, another, another black belt, another black belt another in jujitsu. Oh. There is no move beneath him that he won't accomplish. All right, so the most Gracie room. family, yes. go ahead, bro. Go ha- handle your shit, my BFF, ladies and gentlemen. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. break okay. fall this time in base. Break fall, break fall, right? Boom. Sass, right? And then he's gonna just do a stand kick. in base. Yeah, right there. Boom. That's it. That's Go it. ahead. That's the, that's the okay, first so thing. Okay, so the key is people. to what? To put the foot back? The, the key is to when you break, fall, get down and get me home, fall down. So he protects his neck by break falling. Now he sits up the position one freeze right there. Right? If I would. <laughs> I wait, time out, time out. I'm, I'm high as fuck. Right but this is very entertaining yeah, yeah. right now. Because <laughs> you said freeze and that motherfucker went like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so watch. So let's say an attacker comes, he's going to get up and kick with his left leg. Boom. Kick. And then make the space, and then he's able to come back and stand in base. With hey, the damn bitch, you are a black wow. belt. Go ahead. <laughs> Three, two, one. Thank go you. ahead, BFF. Oh go ahead. No, don't go too far, because yeah, she yeah, said we got two. two. She yeah. said two. Yeah. And, and hey, so the that's other important. Yeah, of course. And so the other one, he can't show it here. But the other, the first thing we'd show. Oh, he's down off. to take his clothes oh, off. Whatever. Yeah, he he's down. He's fucking it. down, bro. Would be, we got a partner right here. Would be how to just forward roll. And what, what is that for? Forward so roll. let's say somebody is chasing you. Yeah. Let's say you're, you're, you're trying to get away from somebody okay. and you can't, right? And you they trip you or whatever and you fall. Again, the most important thing that happens to when you fall is most of the times people put their hands out, you break your hand and now your attacker has you, right? Got it. F- rolling, being able to roll forward, do a forward roll. You're running, you fall, you forward, you roll and you keep coming. You up and keep coming, you're running. Keep you're, running. Ready. Uh, you're ready. You're ready to step a motherfucker in the going. neck yeah. as soon as you step yeah. in. So, you do that so, skateboarding so some too. of the most important things to learn in jujitsu are not necessarily offensive or defensive moves. They're let me let me They're just show evasive this. Moves. Let, let me preparation show, let me moves. Show you this. Wow. Look, in life, in life, just like jujitsu, life is about always maintaining your base and posture. If you and when I say base and posture, look. If, if you, hold on tight. Yeah, hold on, hold on for this one. Right, take notes. If you're in, if you're in your office, if you're at your job, right, and you lose your base and posture, right, what happens? You're gonna get fired. Yes. In your relationship, if you lose your base and posture, you're gonna get fired. In combat, same thing like as in life, if you lose your base and posture, if I can get your head over your knee, you're off base. That means you have no balance. Yeah. That, means you, that means you can't perform right. 100% of your ability. I don't need to knock you out. I don't need to, to, to do anything to you other than get you off base and posture for me to win. Take over. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. It's right. Right. like in life. So if you don't know how to control your base and posture in life, um, you're going to be losing all the time. So look, life is like this. Life is up and down. Life is... Divorce, you lost money, your kid got into a car accident, whatever. Life is like this. Fuck, dog, why you gotta make it all real and shit? Slow down, fool. Those are things that can happen. And look, and you have to be able to keep yourself like this. And that's base and posture. Right, you know. So if I can make burritos every other day, every day, once a week, once a week, you know, burritos every other day, maybe a beer. And, no, and that's, that's, that's what that's about you know that's what I, those are some of the things I teach my, my students when I go and speak I talk about you know li- you know Simon Sinek talks about the infinite game of life and, and what does that mean that means that when you play an infinite game there's people in that game that make their own rules right there's in an infinite game you make your own rules right the game is just to not necessarily to win but to keep the game going. Mm. Right. Right. It's not, it's not who gets there first. It's, it's, it's who stays there the longest. It's who's playing. Exactly. Who's going to fucking exactly. hang out the longest. The longest. And so, and so if you're, if you're sporadic and erratic and you have no base and posture, you're going to lose, man. You're going to lose. You know, I used to be mm. the guy when people bump into me, I used to show them that they bumped into the wrong person. Calma, tu pinche profesor la verga. Now when they bump into me, hey man, let me buy you a drink. What? And, and like, you'd be surprised 
hey, look, again, my energy, my energy, they don't deserve my, ah, they don't deserve that. They, all they're going to get is, hey, man, let me buy you a drink, man. I'm sorry I bumped into you, right? When they bumped into me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, let me get that drink, bro. And then I made a new friend. That's the biggest dick drop of all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Motherfucker yeah, bumped in there. like, no, 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 no. I bet. I bet. This is not an open invite to go bumping into it. I'm going I'm to get you a white Russian because I'll fuck you up if you don't accept it. And it's like, okay, no, I bet. Like, give me that white Russian. <laughs> you know what's funny? And then I, th- hey, what do you do for, oh, I, oh yeah, I get it. I choke people out yeah. for a living. I'm yeah. my gym, I'm man. a black belt jujitsu. I'm really good at squeezing neck. Te mato. Damn, fool. Professor. Yes, sir. Elias. Gallegos, the highest ranking Latino, Latino black belt yes, sir. in the world. In San Diego. San Diego. Uh, whatever, dog. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> in San Diego. In San Diego, yeah. My professor. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm a fucking proud member. Yeah. I, I love it. I don't pr- nah, I don't love it because I don't go at all. <laughs> <laughs> but I gotta go back. Look it. I started okay. I was hardcore. <clears throat> this is my confessional real world mm-hmm. season this is three. My confession. <laughs> I used to go to Jiu Jitsu every fucking other day. Sass, 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 sass. And then COVID hit, then I stopped. And then you could say. No, I, got, I stopped because, you know, fool me. We had to be respectful. We had to be responsible. Yeah, sure. We had to be responsible. Yeah. And then I came back, and the fucking, after two years, two and a half years off, the like third fucking class I took, sass, some full steps on my toe, and it broke. It no! Bro- <laughs> Hey bro, hey bro, hey bro, hey bro, hey bro. And so now it's hey like I've been bro. waiting to come back, but fuck, man. I take my kids because my kids, my kids yeah. are, are, they go, they go consistently, you yeah. know? Two times a week. Okay. And then the other times they're doing fucking baseball, golf, or boxing. So they're busy as fuck, but they get in. They can, You can pick whatever sport you want to play, but you're going to do jujitsu. Yeah. Got it. And now it's like, I fucking watch it. I was like, shit, man, these guys are going in heavy. Because I'll stay after the classes up for the kids and I'll wait for the adults to fight. And I'm like, oh, man, man, these guys... Well, so when was the last time you actually got on the mat? Hey, bro, why you gotta ask that shit, bro? <laughs> uh, like two months. Oh, it's not too bad. No, no, it's That's not too bad. bad. But when you compound that shit on like two and a half years, yeah. it it's hard to get back into jujitsu. I fought the city when I was the only gym in San Diego that never closed. I fought the city. I stayed open the whole entire time. Wow. And, and you know what? And there's positives no, and there's belt. negatives to that. You know, yeah, there's yeah. positives. Yeah. You stay there because people require, as you mentioned earlier, yeah, require the, mental that, health thing. the yeah. access yeah. to mental health. Yeah. Like a release. Yeah. yeah. Some of the fuckers, if we don't have a release, yeah. shit goes sideways. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's why it's like, my boys need to do this shit. They need to know, like, not only to protect themselves, but pre- protect people around you yeah. who yeah. may not be able to protect themselves. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. Those coupled on other things lead me to be like a lifetime member. Yeah. I, I paid for that membership, yeah, bro. Yeah, like yeah. we're like that is a service that I know my barber has paid for it, maybe yeah, used yeah, once yeah. in the last I year. I don't think when was the last time you ever came in? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Oliver yeah. the barber <laughs> keeps bringing him. Yeah, yeah. Bringing the yeah. Yeah. I like this. But you know what? They, I don't want to go. They, they, <laughs> I move they, they, slang, slang, they slang my memberships over there. Sometimes they'll come. Hey, this guy wants to buy membership. I'm on my way. <laughs> Take care of me. Jiu-jitsu is important. It is. It Jiu-jitsu is. is something that I feel like people really buy into yoga mm-hmm. or prayer or whatever, whatever that next dimension, that next level is for you. Yeah. I feel jujitsu belongs there. Yeah. yeah. You know, jujitsu is something what only it's it, it, you'll it'll help you lose weight, it'll help you maintain like your body and be strong always, but mentally it helps you like disconnect and mm. and focus on priorities. Yeah. You know, and priorities are sustainability. And sustainability is taking care of your family and making sure whatever you've created they can take and build on that yeah so for me like at the at the fucking basement at the foundation that's like i feel like i need to get back into it because jujitsu is very important it changed it changed me in a lot of ways and it sounds lame as fuck yeah jujitsu saved me a la verga (laughs) no it it did did. in a sense you know in a sense that you know i got to take care of myself before i've been able to take care of anybody else yes if i'm not taking care of me how the fuck am I going to take care of my kids? Yeah, oh, I just remembered what I was going to say. Oh, wait, wait. Welcome yeah. back! <laughs> oh my God. This grasshopper. Grasshopper. <laughs> grasshopper. Let me tell I you about. Smoke. You get three joints for $12. Tomorrow Toker on Tuesday. Tuesday, 30% Toker Tuesday. Fuck around and find out. <laughs> I'm the young man on the bottom. Grasshopper is this. Li- Go. Can I you shout, need can it. I shout out Andres, Andres and David from Grasshopper Man? Those guys Breakfast always, rolls. Yeah, always yeah. take care of Bowls me. Bowls and rolls. Always take care of me over there. Every time I need something for the nonprofit, Andres shows up with something and it's like, and, and it's, I just love those guys over there. I just love Tell them. me you're not sponsored by fucking Grasshopper. <laughs> One of my other men sponsors. sponsors. You nasty motherfucker. You nasty motherfucker. (laughs) Among all other things, both of us are sponsored by fucking, you know, Grasshopper. One of us has a pre-world. The other one is an awesome black belt. That's just the way the die is cast. That is. Professor. Yes, sir. I'm appreciative of our relationship. I look to grow it. Yes, sir. 
Exponentially. Exponentially. And just keep doing this thing of ours, man. You You know, I look to you because you are doing the thing. You are doing the thing. Like I said, you scraped the bottom. Now you're up there. You're swimming towards the top. You're killing it in business. You're killing it in self-fulfillment, emotional needs. You're killing it in all aspects right now. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Emo Brown Podcast Matiche Monday. Wait, where's the song? There it is. Talking about how many ways a woman loves an hombre But worst of all, hey, 